Hey, girlies, it's me. I know y'all was expecting Brandon, but it's me. Hello. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? What's the morning sunshine? Morning. I haven't had any wine, but I might need to go get me some. Mine is in the refrigerator. Everybody. My voice is still sounds like. Um, Listen. <laughs> I'm over there sucking on some halls right now. Like I not you like, sucking on some. Oh, oh shut up. <laughs> <laughs> not you told you to shut up about the game. <laughs> All right. Um you um Dolores, can you pull up the um It's already up, sister? It's already up. What? The the agenda for today? Yeah, where's where is that? Cause I I'm scared to click something. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I'm scared. Uh, so you you read off the sheet and stuff, and I'll follow your lead because I'm scared. I got okay. you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Um, y'all, can I just? We had a time in Greenville, That's sister. <laughs> a time. Um, I almost didn't make it to the championship game. Um, pray my strength in the Lord. But um, so we're starting off today chatting it up about um the conference championships, of course, conference tournament was crazier this year than ever, in my opinion. Um, but we're going to start it off with a hot topic question. Are conference tournaments important? Do you or di- do you agree or disagree um, with some coaches and media around the country that don't see the value or importance in conference tournaments? I just want to know where that notion came from. Like, what are we doing? It's like, why isn't it important? Like, I understand the regular season you think might hold more weight, but that's why you have two separate championships. The tournament is fun because at the very end of the day, it's, it is it is a – there is a component in it that's for viewership, for entertainment. So why all of a sudden is it not important because your team isn't winning? Because it's something that – you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm just – I'm confused. What, what, what Like, where did this notion come from? And especially – it's especially silly because when you think about it, as, as big as D1 basketball is, everybody's not P5. Everybody doesn't have almost like a guaranteed chance to play in the big dance. You know what I mean? So, yeah, they're, they're important, especially for, for men majors or, you know what I'm saying, maybe P5s who don't get a lot of, um, you know, get a lot of bids. So, I don't, I don't, where did this notion come from? Like, what are we doing? Where, where did that come from? Sounds like a loser thing to say to me. That's that pre-loser mentality that let me just get this out the way first so that in case we lose, I already said this tournament don't matter. So, you know, but I, I definitely, I agree with everything you said. Conference tournaments are, it's huge. It's fun. It's like the ramp up to get you ready for yeah. March, Matt, like the big dance, but like, can you imagine not doing these conference tournaments with what we just saw. Right. Like what would we be doing? What would we be doing? Sitting here, twiddling our thumbs. Waiting for selection Sunday. Boring. Go ahead, Shay. If conference let me start by saying that if <laughs> Moki is saying conference tournaments do not matter because she needs to make sure that the expectations for her team are low. That way if they get upset then, oh, it ain't no big deal. We playing for what matters. And then, but if they win, it's, well, it didn't really matter anyway, but we went out there and won it. <laughs> That's her problem. She is making it a precedent where it's just like, it doesn't matter because they tucked their chain in with South Carolina come in the room. And can I just say, I think what's most interesting to me is I think conference tournaments are more reflective of what we'll see in the NCAA tournament. Like, you don't have two months to game plan for the same teams every week. Like, conference tournaments are that prep, that test you need to say, is my team ready for the big dance? Um, And we've seen it work in different ways. Like, when it comes to tournaments, catapulted teams into a deep tournament run um, or struggling teams have got knocked out early. I think... You know, with the concept of saying, like, we want to grow the game and keep, to Lowe's point, keep increasing viewership, I think conference tournaments are essential to that um, because they're one location outside of the big dance where all the fans of a, a certain conference can meet in a centralized location. 
and turn up. And I know a lot of people are like, well, Greenville is South Carolina's home. But I think if Green if Greenville show anybody anything is that they know how to turn the hell up for for women's basketball. Same with Vegas. Um, and I think the Big Ten does a really good job and Greensboro do, does as well, um, where these like locations are doing a really great job of bringing in fans year after year. Um, I don't see how you turn down the money, but also the ratings um, for these games as well. And to me, they're important um, because it goes into how are you playing? Like, is your team a fluke? Like, can you make a deep run in your conference tournament? I think that's important. And just to add for Greenville, like, if your fans are going to show up, they're going to show up, right? Like, we'll talk about this game later, but Tennessee fans pulled up. Like, there was a point in the game, obviously, when South Carolina was losing their lead and Tennessee was going on their run. And when I tell you, the atmosphere shifted. Like, Tennessee fans. Shift in the atmosphere? Listen, <laughs> but Tennessee fans were loud as hell, like loud. And you could hear them and you could hear them throughout the stadium. Like, so if fans are going to pull up because they support their program, they're going to pull up. Same way South Carolina fans pulled up the Paris. Like, they're going to pull up to support their girls regardless of where the game is. Okay. Um, and let me also say, like, a lot of people get real active on the Twitter app about their favorites, but a lot of people don't get real active in Ticketmaster um, when it's time to show up behind their faves. So just make sure if you're in the audience and you're one of those people that been arguing all day, make sure you've been to a game or two. No shade, no tea. All right, so let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Um, conference tournament recap. We're going to start with the Pac-12. Um, our resident Pac-12 specialist is here to talk her shit. Um, Shay, the floor is yours. JoJo! And the Forbes list. Not the Forbes list. Let me tell y'all <laughs> something, man. Where there is the will, there is the way. Juju lost her ankle. The Lord strapped it back to her and said, you know what? We're going to make it happen for you, okay? But for real, though, I'm super proud of my Trojans. Like, I just, I didn't have us win the Pac-12 tournament, but... That UCLA game took some years off my life. Stanford, I Stanford went out kind of sad. I ain't going to hold y'all. I, I, for that to be the player of the year, man, you get outplayed by 18-year-old two months ago. Then for the ring, you get outplayed by Ivy League transfer. You got to ship the trophy up to LA. I'm so sorry, sister. So talk to us about what do you think this game means for – the postseason tournament-wise for um, USC? I mean, I see a lot of people saying that we got the one seed, which is cool. Um, for me, I just feel like it. the best thing that I've seen is so much of the conversation about USC has been, it's just Juju. Juju's carrying them. Juju, and at the beginning of the season, she was. But to see them be able to win and hoop without her, a bad game or being hurt, I think is the most important thing going into the tournament because she's not going to be able to score 40 and 50 points a night. I mean, that's the least they could do. Shit. Okay. See, cause <laughs> not, I'm sorry, sister, but my God. Not that's too <laughs> much. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The nerds came along. It took them a little bit, but they, Raya is coming along. But I'm proud of them. I think I went out with a bang. Like, what? Colorado, Oregon State winning the double OT, like, shoosh, it's a tough conference. I'm worried that they might not have legs, though. That's my concern. Craig mentioned that last week, and they're going to be exhausted. Okay, this is a question for Lo and Yana and Shay as well. How do you think, I know Lo is going to ride down for Jalen, um, how do you think the Pac-12 is shaping up to fair in the big dance, given the possibility of having two one seeds, at least one two seed, and maybe one other top four seed, and hella teams in the tournament. Um, you so as an overall whole, Stanford, I, the Pac-12 in general, you know, it's just a different type of style of basketball that it just doesn't particularly tinsel, tickle my fancy, especially when 
the tournament can be grueling. It can be gritty. Now, they've been grinding it out all season, you know, against each other. But I think they just play, I don't want to call it pretty girl basketball, but it, it's just different. So, you know, when you back to back to back and gritty matchups against, against a conference that might be a little rough, a little tough, like I think as good as they are, they can run into an Ole Miss. And if Ole Miss having their defense going to travel, if they're having a good day, they could they could get their ass beat. I slick think if Auburn is having a good day, they playing their defense and they're able to slow it, slow it down enough and hit shots, they can ruin somebody's day. You know what I'm saying? So they just play a different style of basketball. And I'm not saying it isn't good, but it's just not where most of my faith lies. Sorry. I don't disagree with that. I, I mean, we've been saying that all season, especially about, like, the Oregon State and them. If you run into some dogs on the floor that's going to bark, like, I don't – if you're not moving, you know, you're not striving up, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, like, so. Mm. But, I mean, but at, at the same time, that's that's just a hypothetical. I can see them doing really well, too. So, I don't want to – I'm not saying they won't do well, but I'm just saying if something like that happened, it wouldn't surprise me. But I do think they can do well because they have been playing hard games all season, you know? Yeah, I'm concerned for uh, Stanford. Um, I just – their guard <laughs> play. Not- I mean, (laughs) their guard play uh, leaves a lot to be desired. Um, If they're on, then, you know, like if they can get some help from like one player, then they'll probably win the game. But so far this season, we've seen that it's really like tough for one player to step up consistently every game. And so it's going to be how far Cam and Kiki can, like, drag them along. But for Juju to, like, struggle in a game, and, yes, I know Southern Cal had other players, like, show up, but you hold Juju to, like, zero points in the first quarter and you losing, like, she only had, like, four or something like that by halftime and you losing, like, that's that's not good. That's not good. (laughs) Yeah. Like, that – And then while they're losing, (laughs) Cam and Kiki are actually hooping. Like, Cam and Kiki were doing what they could do, but it didn't matter. So I'm worried about them. I think the teams that I think may be better off might be UCLA and Colorado just because in their non-con, they challenge themselves to play different conferences. And so it won't be like they haven't seen the different styles of play and which is why I really appreciate when coaches go out into the different power five conferences and try to see different styles of play so that when you get to March Madness, there's something you can pull from. And so I think UCLA and Colorado will have that to their advantage. Okay. I'm going to hold y'all to it. Um, we going to move um, to another game that ended up being just as interesting. Um, Iowa versus Nebraska, Big Ten Tournament Championship. Um, that was an unexpected final. Um, Ohio State, Indiana, um, both got knocked out early in their conference tournament. Um, Bid and Iowa and Nebraska were the final two. Um, and for a minute there, we're going to talk about this later as well. Um, it looked like Nebraska might pull it out. Just give me some quick thoughts about the Big Ten Championship and do we think that this cements Iowa as a one seed if tournaments do matter? Yeah, I, I think they've been, like, any for any reason, Iowa would have been a one seed if they won the uh, tournament championship. I don't think it should jump them over – Uh, like a Southern Cal or Stanford. I've seen a lot of brackets that have them at overall too, but I don't think they played a ranked matchup their entire Big Ten tournament, um, whereas the other teams did. And I didn't think their scheduling was already strong anyway. So the fact that they couldn't play like a Indiana or a Ohio State along the way to the tournament championship to me should matter. But um, I do think they're going to be an overall one seed. I just got to give a shout out to my Terps. You're the turtle hoe. Uh, you got to give us our props because you, you twice, I tried to welcome you into the arms of the turtle. <laughs> you sat up here and you was like, I don't know, girl, sis, I don't think. And I didn't even say that. I'll say, I strongly said no. 
Everybody said, can Maryland beat Ohio State? And I said, hell no. Next question. Like, I will give Maryland their props because I did not see that shit coming. And then they whooped their ass, too. I looked at the score and I, like, I kid you not, I was going through the game because, you know, all the games be coming on at the same time. And I was like, yeah, I'm not watching that one. Whatever. That's, that's why. Somebody watch. must have cursed them. <laughs> Can you Because that's I very nasty and very last rude. Last week on Spaces, I said, I don't know about Ohio State. Now, nah. I said, yeah, I hear you, but I don't know. And what happened? That's so nasty. That's not just, nasty. I, just, I don't like that. What, either. I don't. I don't appreciate. What did it, I call it? Actually, no. I don't receive that in Jesus' name. Um, no. Um, I think my Buckeyes will be fine. Um, I think they needed a reality check. Um, after the Iowa loss. Um, going into the tournament that you you know it's tournament time. You can't sleep over anybody. You can't look over an opponent. Um, you got to execute for the full game, um, and they simply didn't do that. And Maryland was playing for a lot more um, in that tournament, and so they came in and knocked them in the mouth. Um, and so I, I, they beat them fair and square. Um, I was actually extremely impressed with Nebraska in this tournament. Um, I think that they've always had a solid roster, regardless of how shitty their program and coach may be. Um, but I think that they have a competitive Big Ten roster, so I'm interested to see what they might look like in the tournament if Jazz Shelley um, and Alexis Markowski can do something for them in terms of pull an upset in the tournament um, or not. Markowski was really impressive. Like, Jazz did her thing, but Markowski was smoking Iowa. They, yeah. just, couldn't, they just could not figure out the end-of-game situation. Okay, we're going to get back to it. All right, here's another one um, that I thought would go another way, but God said not so fast. Um, Notre Dame versus NC State. Let's um, go. For the ACC championship title. Um, talk to me about it, guys. What did you think? What did you see? What did you like? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, like yeah. Plus, I would say uh, that little X's and O's list, they need to put some respect on Neil. Like, I, I thought she did a great coaching job to, like, especially considering to have a player go down and they're, like, small now with size and numbers. Um, When I was watching the game, I was watching this today, and I think there was this one tweak she made going from the first to the second quarter that really opened things up for Notre Dame, and it was going zone. Like, she went in zone, and NC State looked lost. They didn't know what to do, where to get a shot. They went from scoring like 15 or 16 points in the first quarter to scoring like, I want to say it was like maybe seven in the second quarter. And that helped Notre Dame get back in the game and kind of figure out what they were doing. Um, and then Maddie Westbell, like she was hooping. They couldn't like, they couldn't find nobody to guard her in that second half. Anytime it felt like Notre Dame was out of it, she made a huge shot. And then Hannah closed it out um, while NC State was, like, forcing threes or getting turnovers. Hannah was attacking the rim and, like, forcing them to defend her. Uh, so Notre Dame just played a great game plan. What were you saying, Lo? I only said I don't trust Wes Moore. That's my synopsis. But I was at SEC all week, so I didn't even watch. But I don't trust Wes Moore. That I said that last week too. Sweet 16. Um, <laughs> do we think that Notre Dame has cemented themselves as a two seed after winning the ACC tournament title? Ooh. <sighs> Three seed, maybe. I, maybe. I don't know. I don't but, know. Yeah, go ahead, Yana. I was just going to say maybe three seed. I don't know about two seed. I think a lot of the two seeds seem like pretty locked in, like Ohio State, UCLA. I think um, Texas will either, like if Texas is, ends up being a one seed, whoever Texas replaces on the one seed lot is a guaranteed two seed. Um, and for some reason, it just I just really feel like they're going to make LSU a two seed. I don't think they deserve it, but I just really feel like LSU is going to be a two seed. 
Okay. Okay, we will we'll be revisiting this on Friday, but more, I mean, I'm sorry, on Sunday, but more information to come. Um, okay, UConn versus Georgetown. Um, and while we're doing that, we definitely want to give a special shout out um, to Darnell Haney um, and what he's been able to do with Georgetown. Um, and just in the aftermath of losing Tasha Butts, um, how that program has been able to come together um, and make it to a Big East Conference Tournament title, we definitely want to shout um, him and that program out. Um, so any thoughts on um, the Big East Conference Championship between UConn and Georgetown? Um, it's just... Never mind. I ain't going to start because I know how to get <laughs> I know how to get. That's all I got. I yeah, like I don't, I don't, I don't mean it. I don't, I don't say this to be rude or to be nasty or anything like that. But my first thought was, and UConn plays a phenomenal out of conference schedule, so you know, at the end of the day, it weighs out. But man, just seeing them, it's just like after you know being at the SEC and seeing the ACC and seeing Juju come out on top in the Pac-12. You know, I don't want to say nobody expected that, but you know, and just seeing. Oh, four times straight. It just it just didn't hit the same. And that's not no fault of the women, the little girls on the team. You know what I mean? But it was just like, you know, cute. Like I'm proud of them. They, they, have been, they have been through so much. So I know it's still, it was, they still felt good about it. You know what I mean? As they should. But as you know, it's just like, hmm. Yeah, it just feels like a city conference, like a city league championship for me. Like, it's just not the same, um, that conference, and yeah, that's that's really all I can give them. But again, shout out to Georgetown. I thought they got a big win um, over Creighton, um, which will definitely bode well for them, and hopefully um, that staff can stay intact at Georgetown um, and build on this moving forward. Any other thoughts, final thoughts about you kind of Georgetown? Is that um, what's the Aaliyah Edwards? They said she broke her nose. Yeah, that's sad. They said it was bad. I saw the clip. Oof, yikes. So hopefully she'll be good to go. Wasn't didn't she have like a nose injury last year? Mm-hmm. I think that's why she was wearing that mask. So she probably had to get that back. But I feel like she I don't think she gonna she not gonna see it. Oh no, she's definitely not gonna yeah, see she it. Gonna hope. Okay, um, and currently the Big 12 Conference Championship is going on. My um, Iowa State babies made it all the way to the championship game um, after some impressive wins, in my opinion, um, and they are currently playing Texas. Last time I checked, Texas was in that ass, um, but any thoughts about that game? Um, currently, we'll revisit it later. Iowa State is so easy to root for. They are. Like, they are just, I just enjoy watching them play. And that's not something I say about Big 12 teams. But I like watching them play. They just so cute yeah. and, like, balled in. Agreed. They're cute and balled in and they be doing their thing. It's just so cute. Like, oh, it's just cute. I like teams that you can see grow. Like, and similar to what Shay was saying about um Southern Cal earlier, like, with so many young players, like, you can live with those mistakes when you see the growth along the way. And I think that's what I really appreciate about Iowa State is, like, each of their players, Addie Brown, Audrey Cooks, um, all their freshmen, like, each game they do something. You're like, oh, baby, she keep doing that in a year, two years. Like, that's going to be crazy. So I think that's what I really like about them is they they know their style of play. They know what they want to do. And even if they don't do it, they know what to do. Um, and I just really appreciate them playing through a big um, in a conference that seemingly hates bigs. Um, so, yeah, I, I like that team. I like that program. Any um, word on Vic um, and what he's done with Texas this year um, without Rory Harmon? Yeah, I'm impressed. I didn't think that um, – like, I, Vic's, a, Vic's a great coach. And, but I just thought it'd be a little bit harder just losing a point guard. Sometimes it hurts. And I do think there's an advantage to being in the Big 12 because the Big 12 don't really have teams that can, like, press them and make Madison Booker really 
work. Um, but I think he's done a good job of managing the team and helping Madison Booker continue to still be a scorer, but continue to get other people involved. Like seeing her growth this season has been really amazing. She's going to learn so much from having to run point that when she starts going back to playing off ball next year, it's going to be even scarier. So they're like, I've been impressed with him um, and what he's done this year in the big 12. Victoria been hooping. Victoria Schaefer doing doing the thing. I can't make fun of the dribble drive because it's <laughs> so props. But I, hey, I will say everybody's faves have went through. Everybody's faves have run the dribble drive at some point when they needed a win. Listen. So. <laughs> It, it worked. But I will say okay. that as a two seed, because I think it'll probably be a two seed, uh -oh. depending uh -oh. on matchups, they could get upset early. Oh, okay. Hot take alert. We're actually going to do another sink or swim for y'all um, at the um, selection show watch party because I need to I need, I need to see your takes on the Summer Jam screen. So if you're in the audience, go ahead and look, look at the girls. Because the sink or swim is coming back, okay? So make sure you did your research. Um, and we got a bracket challenge on that. Okay, moving on. Um, I think one of the most interesting and intriguing parts about conference tournament play this year was the amount of games that went into critical crunch time. Like, when it's time to win the game, what are the X's and O's looking like? Because we know the, the girls love to talk about X's and O's. And, and is your team executing in crunch time? So I'm going to turn the desk over to Shay and let her walk us through a little crunch time tea. We're going to start with Colorado and Oregon State. Talk to me about crunch time, Colorado v, Colorado v. Oregon State. Oh Lord, it's a lot of pressure. Okay, so Colorado, if y'all joined with joined us on playback, which we won't have to do no more, thank the Lord. Colorado has the ball, fourth quarter, what, three, four, five, six seconds left. We just we get it to Jalen and we don't get a quality shot out of it. It was weird. I don't know if everybody I know Yana was watching it with me, but I was there too. Yeah, Dolores was on. It's like you downhill like I don't know if I want a Jalen Mitty when it's time when it's money on the line you know what I'm saying but maybe I'm wrong so what would you have preferred in that what in they that did city? when after when they was in overtime which is get her in a ball screen get her going downhill at somebody's feet because she's quicker than everybody on the floor okay on the flip side of that I think Oregon State was masterful in their crunch time, especially in that in um to drop that three play towards the end of regulation, yeah. um Scott was Scott had the clipboard clipping like he knew who he wanted to get the ball to, ran the perfect set, got the player wide open, she knocked down the shot, and we say we've said it so many times watching Oregon State this season, that's a team that thrives in the half court, so you know Scott got a pin um when it comes to drawing up some. Um, out of timeout um, plays. Um, and I think that really was the deciding factor in that game was when it was time to like get a bucket, um, drop a play, they knew, they, they, they were prepared. And I think Colorado was somewhat trying to play like just let Jalen do Jalen and create something and make something instead of actually drawing up plays to, to really play and win the game. Um, so, uh, on the X and North, X's and O's chart, one to Scott. Okay. We got another big 12. I'm sorry, big pack 12. Um, Wait, crunch hold on. Time Before you move forward, yeah. I just want to say, and to add to that, I, the one thing that I love about Oregon State in general, and we've talked about it before is how you can never speed them up in general. And I think that helped them in that Oregon State Colorado game because there was like a lot of back and forth. One team scores, other team scores, one team scores, other team scores. And there was a moment where I thought uh, Jalen may have been going too fast. And then she um, didn't take the right shot. And Oregon State had like a fast break. It was that layup. Yeah. It was that layup. And Oregon State had a fast break. 
And instead of taking the fast break because their bread and butter has been bears the entire game, they pulled it out and was like, nope, we gone. Because I know everybody in the playback comments was like, why would she not go for that? Why would she not go for that? And it's like, that's not their game. They going to go half court offense and make sure they get the perfect shot every single time. And that helped them so much in that game versus Colorado and Oregon State. Well, versus Colorado here. Yeah, it was it was it was a it was a fun game for sure. Um, okay. Um, Shay, talk to us about USC UCLA um crunch time. And we have it on the summer jam screen. So if you didn't watch, watch. Uh yeah, I mean this one was tough because you know what about everybody in the gym know the ball going to Jew. But I, that first one, love you, Jew, were you dribbling into somebody's leg, sister? We're gonna have to work on that one. But the thing is, is that as young as Juju is, UCLA wasn't any better in crunch time, which was odd to me. If I'm Corey Close, I'm like, this is my moment. You know what I'm saying? And it just was not. The X's was there, but the O's was outside, and it was a little weird for me. <laughs> like, Ju gets, they get, they have two, if y'all look at the video, they got two opportunities to go, UCLA does, and they just, like, one, they just dribbled a clock out. Like, it was really weird to me. What's interesting is, uh, respectfully, I have heard or I have seen people question UCLA coaches X's and O type thing, like because I, I we, we she's built a phenomenal team, she's done this, but some games I I know I personally am like, what is going on? You know, why why are they losing this game with this roster? Do you think that that's a little bit of it, or do you just like kind of think it was just a bad draw, like? I think it's I think it's I think it's a mix. Okay. Like for me personally, like in both of those situations, the ball has got to go to bits. Exactly. Like yes. the ball has got to go to bits. And I think what that team is struggling with and is very clear is they're they've never I've not seen a UCLA team with a player like that Agreed. in the court close era. Agreed. Um and it's hard. I know they've been playing together for a full season, but I don't. I don't really consider um, Kiki Rice like a true point guard. No. So it's hard when you don't have a true point guard in the game to, you know, it. Typically, the coach is going to drop the play, but you also need the players in on the team and in the game to execute that play. And I think that's where I think the discrepancy is with UCLA is like with USC, they run a system that basically says like, Juju go do you, everybody else be, you know, support. UCLA is very much different that the ball is always in Charisma or Kiki's hands, which means that Betts is at the expense of those two players a lot of the time. And I think that's where their struggles come. It's like either they're trying to go through her in a bad matchup or they're not going to her at all. Um, so I think it is struggling with X's and O's, but also like, how do I coach the roster that I have? Right. I feel like UCLA's last two, um, well, plays, uh, at the end of the fourth quarter and end of overtime are going to be the two plays that I also wonder about, uh, the same way I wonder about, um, Bill Lambert's play in Vegas and Phoenix, because I just don't really know what was the play because they never got a shot off. Like the fur at the end of the fourth quarter, they passed the ball into Kiki and she literally just stood there. Like she didn't even turn around to face the basket. She literally just caught it and her back was to the basket and did nothing. And I was just like, what the fuck did I just watch? And then we get to the end of overtime and Charisma gets the ball and it's only like one. Bo- I'm, I don't really know if people really know how long one second is, but Charisma is like. Here, child. Listen, okay, but uh, Charisma like dribbled the ball down the baseline into no man's land, and I was just like, "What? Like, what is happening? I don't really know what's going on here." So I do agree that maybe a lob into bets would have been nice. Even like try her for the mid range. She's already made a shot from the mid range before to help you uh, win a game, or no, to help you go into overtime. So maybe try her. But I, I don't really know what the game plan was. Yeah, I think that's going to be the biggest thing to determine how far UCLA 
run, like how deep they can run into the tournament, is they go cold so quick. Like, there are games where I'm like, shoot, everything's flowing, they look good and in the flow, and then they just go on a, a drought. Um, because like we talked about on that our live um, YouTube, is I personally don't think they have any dogs on the roster, which in come tournament time, you need that. And I think that's what really shined through in the Pac-12 tournament was they don't have that one player that's demanding the ball. Like Charisma hooped. I, I have to go back and shout her out. Like Charisma really did hoop in the U USC game. But I think even she needs more from her supporting cast than a player like Juju does um, in order to win those types of games. But I think um, – go ahead. I think a lot of – I mean, we've said since the beginning of the season, that team is reminiscent of a South Carolina team, like kind of like the Freshies-esque era. Um, so them going stagnant on offense sometimes does not surprise me because it's literally the same makeup. You got your Kiki, you got Zaya, you got your Lauren Bet. She's a little taller. She's not Aaliyah. But you know what I mean? They, they have that same type of makeup, composition. So it – it, it it tracks, but they they gonna have to figure it out. They they need somebody who could just go get a bucket. And sometimes it's Kiki Rice, depending on the day. Just like we had a sometimes a Zaya, depending on the day. Um, sometimes it could be Charisma. You know what I'm saying? But you just you just never really know. Yeah, yeah. but I, and I okay. think the difference in that is coaching, right? Because Hell yeah. one thing <laughs> one thing Don was gonna do was draw up a play to make sure Aaliyah got the ball. Like, it, if, if Aaliyah had to get a back screen to come and get to her corner spot or something, she was going to draw up a play to make sure Aaliyah got the ball. And sometimes I think they go too much away from Betts, mm -hmm. especially when Betts is the mismatch in a lot of games. Okay. I, I, I Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, let We're moving on to Nebraska v. Iowa. Um, Shay's going to post the – Highlight to the Summer Jam screen, and then we will discuss. Um, but while that's happening, what thoughts? I don't think these coaches be putting the girls in position to do anything because it just gave ISO. Like, here's an ISO. You break this person down and try to get a shot off. Like, no, just drop. Like, you got three. You got two great shooters on your team, and Natalie Potts, and you got um, dang, by her name just escaped me. Jazz Shelly, drop like a elevator so she can get a three up or something like drop something where she can get an open look. Don't make her try to go one on one and break somebody down. Like I, I don't know, I, I don't get it. All right, the vi the video, y'all. If y'all pull down your screen, it should be up there. The most confusing part about this to me is so Caitlin ties the game. Nebraska gets the ball with 29 seconds and they literally dribble 29 20 other seconds off the clock. Stand there and dribble. Then they call a timeout, and then you don't draw up a good play. Like, credit Iowa, they defense did what it was supposed to do, but how you don't get Markowski the ball in that situation is you have a chance to win the Big Ten championship, and that was your, that was the money? You always wanted to see? I don't think so. You scared them, and then you lost it in overtime. Yeah, and I feel like if you're the underdog, you gotta win in regulation. You gotta I, win in regulation. If I, if That's the rule. Overtime, I'm like, oh yeah, who gonna who gonna win? You done? Toast. Yeah. So this is a comp. This the um, UCLA game and the Nebraska game just kind of reinforce this for me. Do you think college court coaches do a good job of coaching post players, like dominant post players, especially in late game situations? Because uh -huh. we both have identified UCLA didn't get the ball to bets enough. Nebraska needs to play through Markowski. I think a College. better a better thing is that the girlies are lacking fundamentals and don't make good passes. I don't Ooh. think I don't think because the coaches I think coaches are smart. They have to know basketball. I don't think the issue is always I'm not gonna get my big girl the ball because duh. I think sometimes they like I don't know if you can make that pass. Because we see so many times that the girls cannot make good entry passes. They throw it too low. They throw it too high. They throwing it in their knees. You know, so I think that could be part of the problem. Like, the girlies don't make good entry passes, and I don't trust you to get it down there. That could be an issue. I agree with Lowe 100%. I really think that we 
struggle, and it's not even just the kids because the pros are just as terrible. Oh at, yes, at entry passes, like they just cannot get the ball, especially if the person's hands are not great. You throwing the ball all over the damn court. Like I agree hundred percent with that. I just don't think the girls know how to get the ball in there. Okay. All right. Um. Not the here. Oh Jesus, my God! Today I still. Let me just say this now. Y'all almost wrecked my damn car three times <laughs> between, between Villarica, Georgia, and um, Buckhead. Child, my God. Um, South Carolina versus Tennessee. Let me preface this by saying I've never seen Don coach a game this bad since Iowa last year. Okay, and y'all know it's my girl. I ride down. Yeah. I personally, I was, uh, I was in the car saying to myself, she don't want us to go into the tournament undefeated. She does not want us to go into the tournament undefeated. She wants us to have a loss before we go into the tournament. That's every, that's the only thing I can say after halftime. She wants us to have a loss going into, after halftime. But I serve a God who says that even when you try to fail, I'm not going to let you. So let's talk about it, girls. The buzzer beater heard around the world wait, wait, wait. in Brazil, in Paris, in Milan, and, and, and everywhere around the country. We gotta start. Talk to me about we it. gotta start. We gotta start somewhere else first. We just said okay. we just said when we was talking about the other teams, the girlies can't make entry passes and they not giving to the bigs. God damn it, Don said we doing the opposite. We forced them to a big who don't want to do nothing with it, who not ready to catch it, who's not making moves, but we gonna keep giving it to her. And I was so shook. I'm like, what are we doing? We had a huge lead, like, and, and it didn't make sense to me because Tennessee, their girls aren't as fast. They want you to play in the half court because that's where they're better. We were so much better when we were getting out. We were running. We had Sonia. We had Ashley. We had Lay that were out and running the ball, and the Tennessee girls could not do anything. And then we slowed it down and played their style of basketball, and they got back in the game, and we just kept forcing it. And I and I, I just I just, if, if Camilla does not hit this shot, we'll be talking about her in a different light after this game, and we'll be talking about Dawn in a different light after this game. So we must have we first have to start there because my God, today I was I was so stressed. How was I? I was sick. I was, I was like, what are we doing? And like, I I stayed in um Tennessee's team hotel and me and my sister we were like looking at each other like, well shit, what time we need to go back to the hotel? Cause I'm really trying to go through like the lobby with all this like celebration shit. Like, is there a back door? Like, I guess I'm not pulling up until later because ain't no way I'm walking through that hotel in this breezy hall shirt right now. Like, ain't no fucking way. Um, so I, yeah, I was sick. I was sick. Y'all seen that little TikTok of the little girl that was like crying and she was like, they're not gonna do it, they can't do it. That was me. I was like, ain't no way. Like, and what the craziest part is, it, it didn't, this, this is how, this is how spoiled we are because it wasn't until maybe. 30 seconds left that I was like, okay, they might lose. Before that, I was, I was still, but that's, not, that's awful. That's all. That's great. But at the same time, I feel like I'm like, ain't one to like 30 seconds left. I was like, oh shit, they really might lose. With 30, like, with 30 seconds left on the clock, about 35, I was like, oh, they still got it. That was like, oh shit, maybe not. Um, But let me tell you, Rocky Top is a bop because we was losing and I was mad and I was sweating. When Rocky <laughs> Top came on, I was still tapping my foot. That's a catchy ass song. But, um, and <laughs> yeah, that, that play was, that was abysmal to let them girls come all the way back. And I don't think it was the girls' fault. Camilla was Camilla. Powell wasn't having a good game. But we had some girls that were playing phenomenally. And they just did not get back in. I was just so confused. Shout out to I will Rakeem. say. Bingo. That's where I was coming. Oh, God. Rakeem, God. That's a pro. Rakeem is a pro. superstar second half. Like, that's, I don't not... understand how she's so underrated to this day, bro. Like, it's crazy to me. It's no way you – but it's crazy. And Mark – uh, shout out to Mark tweeted something that was really uh, profound. He was like, it's crazy that it took him this long to get her in pick and rolls and have her just going at people and scoring. And I don't really know why Kelly waited, but shit, like, yes, that is a professional right there. And if you put her in positions to score, she's going to score the rock every damn time. Yeah, I don't really, I agree with Lowen. I don't really understand how she's so underrated. Like today I asked, you know, now that Cam's uh, into the draft, you know, what's the draft order you see going? And some people are like, you know, Cam and I've had a lot of responses be Cam and Caitlin are locked, but what do you think would happen to three? And I was like, Ricky is a lock. That girl is a pro. Like, yeah, I'm I think like, she no could go too. 
Yeah, like no offense to the people behind her because they're pros too, but Rakia is a ready to start now pro. Like I think when you go Caitlin, Cam, and Rakia, they're all players that you can put on a team. They don't have to have the biggest role, but they're ready to start right now. Like don't dismiss Rakia because Rakia, like I, I already knew this, but after watching her go versus USA basketball, she was cooking them. She was Boy. cooking them. I'm talking cooking Laney. Cooking Jackie. These are people we consider to be some of the best defenders on their teams. And she was cooking. Ricky is the pro. Okay, is the most pro ready. Yeah. I think build, ability to take contact on both ends of the floor, I, I got to go with Rakia. I think for me, what was so special about Ricky in this game is that she often gets mid range happy or like mm -hmm. extended, mm -hmm. extended jumper happy. And when it was time to get to the money, Ricky was attacking the rest. She, yeah, I got you. She definitely, you know, she definitely still pulled up, and but it was a it was a much shorter yeah. um and closer shot. And they were so efficient. Like every time Ricky shot the ball, I was like, fuck in the car. God damn. Like, like there was a play um late in the game, Camilla got caught. And Rakia pulled up at the free throw line. Camilla did not know whether to leave the rim or go to, like, she was mixing the whole game after halftime. Um, and you could tell that, like, she was like, I got to get this win. I got to get this win. And Jewel Spear was too. Mm -hmm. um, but now, let's talk about how we got to where we got. Um, so pull, pull on. Um, Shay posted the final video. So, South Carolina and Tennessee are trading, trading baskets. Um, Tennessee just ties the game. Um, and each team, like I said, is trading baskets. South Carolina gets to the end of the floor. Um, they, there's a scrim under the rim. Ashland gets the ball, throws it backcourt to um, Tessa. Tessa yeah. Tennessee gets the ball in the next possession. And Rakia. Okay. South Carolina goes back on the other end of the floor and tries to make some shake. We get a missed three-point shot. And at that moment, I, that's when, when Lowe said to 30 seconds, that was the moment. Yeah. At, at that moment. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have to foul. South Carolina has to foul in order to um, stop the clock. And you, the ESPN cameras cut to the um, sidelines. We got parents hugging family members and friends. It looks like the game is over. Jasmine Powell's going to seal it with two free throw shots. Now, mind you, I'm so pissed in this car. <laughs> I done turned the game. I done turned the game off. I done started my thread about how, you know, we needed to lose in order to be Not prepared for the tournament time. <laughs> um, We're going to take it back to 2022. Same. This is a young team. Like, I had my thread ready. I was already on the second post in the oh, thread, okay? Girl. So, I turned it off, okay? But then the Spirit of the Lord said, Get your turn the game on, okay? So I turn the game back on. I see a missed shot. I didn't know she missed the first shot. I only knew she missed the second shot. So she missed the second shot. What Dolores? What? Yeah. That first miss, Dolores. <laughs> it was it's the really way she like, got it. Dolores. It was really <laughs> like she got her ass up there and said, "Shit, we got this." Ass. <laughs> I promise. I promise, Dolores. I'm like I was sitting in the stands, and I looked at Chris. I said. Damn, she missed that bad. Like it flew <laughs> off the rim, and I'm in my head like, "Why did you shoot it? That what was that? It was really like she didn't even try." And then now you done missed the first one that bad, and everybody looking at you like, "Girl, what the hell?" Now you sitting there trying to focus and make make the second one, and that's a lot, that's a lot tougher. I promise y'all, I look like she threw that first one. I kid you not. I kid <laughs> like you not. she. She walked up and I like I had to go back and watch it and then watch her like regular free throw routine and it was definitely not her regular free throw routine. Right. Like she that <laughs> like she walked up, caught the ball, took one dribble and was like Boom. <laughs> and I was just like, huh? <laughs> I mean, thank you, but huh? <laughs> like what? She threw it. Like I'm telling you that girl did not shoot that ball. Yeah, I was so pissed I couldn't watch it. I I really I realized Please, literally go back and watch. I did not time. turn the game back on until the second. Like I when when my phone switched back to the game, Malaysia was dribbling down the court. Okay, oh, okay. so Lay was dribbling down the court. They foul. Now we gonna talk about all this in detail in a second. Do y'all think that they should have fouled there? 
Mm. I, I think it's easy for people to say no, but it, it's it's like they knew the per. It seems like they knew the personnel because if I'm keeping it a buck, if I see Malaysia, I feel like a Malaysia got could have got two step, one, one had like a dribble court. That's a shot Malaysia can make. Mm-hmm. If we right. keeping it a buck, we know Malaysia like that's Malaysia's thing. Malaysia get one more dribble, one more step, and launch it. That was close enough for Malaysia to make that shot. So in retrospect, huh, you know, hindsight is either say, oh, you, I wouldn't have fouled, but at the same time, like if Malaysia going down here, I'm probably gonna slow her down too. I don't, I don't even want the chance of Malaysia getting a, getting a little closer and taking that shot. To be honest, because even with like one second, one second left, Malaysia was close to the three point line, mm-hmm. fair, but like she probably could have get one more step inside because yep. Malaysia's fast. Mm-hmm. And she could have get at least a foot inside and get like a floater off or something. And there was really nobody down there oh. kind of stepping up to defend her. So like hindsight's 2020. Now you probably say don't foul her, but I I would have fouled. Like Dawn and them yeah. didn't have any timeouts. Yep. They like you don't have any timeouts. Even if you do foul, you can't draw up a one a play from the mm-hmm. sideline. Um yeah, I, I would foul. I would have found it. I don't. Okay. I don't. So next, well, go ahead, Shay. Hold on. I was gonna give y'all. I asked our homie, uh, Coach Marsh. Uh, for y'all who don't know, Tyler. Position, we love Coach Marsh, and he was saying basically what y'all saying. It's not a right or wrong answer because how fast Malaysia is individually. Like she could have got all the way close to the basket with really how fast could've. she was going. Mm-hmm. So it's just not. A, it's just kind of like a personnel type of thing. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. So next question then is okay, you 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 foul, you don't call the timeout. Thoughts. I'm okay with that too. Because I'm not letting okay. I'm not letting Don draw a play out. Right. <laughs> I'm okay with that. No, Kelly ain't have a damn thing on that clipboard. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you want Don to have time to, to make some shape? I don't she definitely would have made some shape. Right. Yeah, I'm not I don't even want to give you the chance. No. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now no timeout was called. You don't put anybody on the inbound. That's where they began That's to fuck up. up. And yep. that is exactly okay. where yeah, yeah. the issue started to creep yep. up. Yep. Because yep. and then she up. tell like Rakia kind of steps up towards Raven, like she's about to guard her. And she tells her back up. Like mm-hmm. she's like, no, back up. And that's like that's it made it. me think about New York and Vegas and how, to me, Sid defense on that out-of-bounds play was yep. huge yep. because it forced Sabrina to throw a higher pass, which made Stewie kind of fumble the ball a little bit, and that took more time off the clock. And Ricky is long. So just given Raven, who's a great passer, by the way, this clear bird's-eye view of everything going on on the court is insane. Also, Raven's on the other side of half court. Yep. Yeah, that was. Yeah. If, if Rakia long, long arms would have been there, just standing in front of Raven, jumping up and down, Raven does not make that pass. You right. She doesn't. She the way she, I was telling Quentin the way she threw that ball was like a dang on a, a shortstop on a baseball yeah. team. Like she didn't even like. Fundamentally, no, passing like from the chest. <laughs> and that's and that's why I'm like, okay, I understood the personnel with the Malaysia thing. I don't understand the personnel with 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 uh, Raven. Raven is such a great passer. She's so she's so good at finding her teammates. I'm if I'm not worried about Camilla shooting it, cool. But I'm gonna worry about one of the best point guards in the um in the conference standing there willy nilly making a pass. I, that's what I don't like. Even if I don't got faith in Camilla, I'm damn sure putting somebody on Raven on the pass. Like, you know what? That's why I'm just like, well. Like, you got to make it as difficult as possible. Yeah. Even like, with that pass, that. she got the pass right where Camilla needed it to where Camilla just stepped back. And right in the shooter's pocket, Camilla stepped back, and boom. Like, it was all one motion. So what, would, have to what would be a reason nothing. not? What would be a reason not to put somebody on the pass? I don't know. I don't have one, genuinely. <laughs> Prize picks, fan duel. Underdog, <laughs> like maybe if you don't trust a lot of the like, if you because it's at this point, it's basically five on four defensive wise. So, if maybe you had somebody defending Camilla and you wanted 
to have an additional person around like the three point line to kind of force them away from the basket or something like that. Or if you see somebody come into the basket, you double team them immediately so that they're not available. But Rakia can't just be standing there. Like she was just like, you had two people on your court being decoy on defense. That's it. Like Tamari was sitting in the paint, not doing anything. And Rakia wasn't guarding anybody either. So it essentially became four on three. And then when Camilla caught the ball, nobody ran at her. I could, I mean, I understand, okay, I probably wouldn't put nobody on Camilla either, but when she called it and she looked like she was finna launch that bitch, why are y'all still just looking? Rakia was saying she didn't <laughs> she didn't jab at her. She didn't nothing. She didn't let Raw. Do no clap. No, yeah, like, like, that that's that was the thing for me. Like if you're not putting somebody on her, I, you you played you played the numbers, is what it is. I don't you know, like I think that's a that's up in the air too. No, no right or wrong answer. But once she caught that, and it looked like, oh shit, she finna shoot. Why are y'all just looking at her? At least if, if it's not a comfortable shot for her, you don't even want to run at her. I don't know. That's bark crazy. at her. Yeah, run. Bark. Run something like y'all keep telling us all day. The past two days, she's six seven. She's six eight. She's six nine. She that big, and you don't run at her to make her uncomfortable on yeah, a three point shot that she don't shoot. That's crazy. That yeah, that so those those things that was where the issue was. I the, told y'all if y'all watched that play, like Camilla had enough time to literally go through the entire beef set. Like we all know, if you a hooper or a hoop, we all know the beef, the balance, the eyes, the elbow follow through. Camilla did all that shit. All like you could, it's like her, in her brain, she was walking through every yeah. single step. She got yeah. her feet together, she, she got her elbow, she looked at the basket and followed through. Like she, she had time to do it all because nobody was guarding her. That, that is insane. Lasted so long. It, it's the fact that for me, that's the most confident I feel like I've ever seen Camilla shoot the ball, layups involved. It, 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 Agreed. That's the most confident. She caught the ball, went out to catch Raven Pass. I saw some people say, Raven pass was wild shit. She probably put it. Let me put it right here so you could get right there. I don't know. Who knows? Because she had enough time to fuck think about it. Wasn't nobody guarding her. Camilla catches the ball, pivots out to make sure she's on the three point line. Got enough time to tuck the elbow, look up. But I'm just like, how in the hell? Like nobody. That was a long. I feel like that was the longest second in my life. It felt like like a movie. Like everything slowed down. I could see it all. I'm looking around. I could see everybody head. I could see everybody not breathing. Like, it seemed like she had so long. But I almost feel like by the time the girls on Tennessee team probably realized what happened, it was too late. I don't think they thought she was going to shoot the damn ball. I don't know. Because it just don't make sense. Nobody ran at the girl. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Okay. But I know if she didn't hear it, we having a whole different conversation about X's and O's today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so talk. <laughs> nope, no shade. See, no. the, the Lord is just like you. I made a thread. <laughs> like, I literally, I was angry, like, angry typing as all that shit was going on. I was like, man, this is some bullshit. Like, what the fuck? Like, I was <laughs> writing a thread. I had about three tweets, and then, you know, she missed the first free throw, and I was like, ooh. Okay. Oh, okay. And then she was the second one. I said, all right. And then when Malaysia got fouled, I said, oh, all right. One second, Powell ain't. And the people, and I'm looking at the people on the court, and I'm like, Powell ain't really been hitting shit today. <laughs> oh, <laughs> weird. I was like, well, shit. Um, all right. All right let's, let's go, I guess. And as soon as she made that shot, I'm just like jumping them down. Somebody slapped the phone out of my hand. The thread hit sin. I'm like, oh shit, I got Oh Lord, I didn't know that. <laughs> so I'm like, shit, I gotta delete the thread. So ain't nobody see the thread. So God is good. But um I I, I believed all the time, you know? Whole yeah, time. I'm I, Kelly man. God. <laughs> I'm sorry for God. Okay. She looked like she was gonna like heaving, like she was gonna throw up. Oh my gosh! You finally got the number one team on the ropes. Oh shit! I would. I, I wish I could have been on Twitter when that shit happened. I know she was wild. Um. Yeah. I. 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 I that shit was crazy. But the fact that, to me, I think what was the most amazing thing is it, what it looked like is I, I, Camilla 
clearly Don got all the trust in the world in Camilla. Um, and it looks like Camilla trusts her as well because like somebody put in that video, you could see where at first she like, Camilla, give it a pal. And then you could see when she walked over the court, she lets Camilla shoot that motherfucker. And Camilla don't blink. Camilla don't look confused. She don't laugh. She don't throw her hands up. Camilla just turned back around like, shit, okay. <laughs> you want me to shoot it? Like, and that's trust. I mean, I, I, that's dope. I, sh- fool me. I, I, I that. Because Camilla, you know those blink. seasons. You, when, like, boy, you know those said, don't seasons. Don't blink. She ain't blink. The, those, there are certain moments in life and in sports where you just have to be like, it's just God yeah. or whoever your higher power is. And I genuinely feel like this whole season up until this point has just been God. Because I think in hindsight, when you look at the roster, you say it's one of the most deep benches in the country. When you look at the roster, you say it's one of the most talented rosters in the country. But none of us, I mean, none of us nope. expected these types of results. And I sure as hell didn't expect us to beat Tennessee on a buzzer beat a three-point shot from Camilla. So that's my segue into the game of the weekend, hell, probably the year. Um, it's been talked about everywhere. The LSU versus South Carolina SEC championship game, that meant nothing. That was not important. Um, That was just a glorified pickup game. Um, Let's talk about it. It, for me, like I said, in the first quarter, I had to get up and leave and go to the bathroom. I said, this is making me uncomfortable. This is is too much. It It was a play where... Camilla had like blocked Angel shot twice and then they had ended up getting on the floor because I couldn't really see the little ticky tack stuff from where I was. It was that play that I immediately was like, this is going to get out of control. These refs need to do better. That one ref that walked away, she hasn't been good all season. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure how they pick these refs, but in my opinion, you will send your best ref. If I know that this is going to be hectic, I feel like the best, how can I say this? I, while I do think there were going to be other good games on champion on champ day or champ and champ week or whatever, I think the the hint at a South Carolina LSU game would make me say, "Let me send my best officials." Am I tripping? No. Nah. So I don't know why. One, they didn't have a meeting to say, "Hey, this is how it's going to go. We're not going to take the girls out of the game, but we need to make sure it's this and that." I'm not sure why that even has to be a conversation. If you've grown and you remotely follow basketball, you should have known that. So I'm just not sure why those things weren't. It clearly seems like they weren't at the forefront in the game, and that doesn't make sense to me personally. Yeah, from the jump, like, first, like, I will say, like, we were all on the side where LSU kind of started um, their scoring, and, like, you could see the intensity from the jump. Like, first bucket made, shit talking already begin. The pushing already going, the shoving already going. Like, I was like, oh, this is going to be, like, a battle. They are going to go at it. And like Lo said, it just gave the vibes of if they don't, like, if the refs don't get this under control, Something's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna happen, but something's going to happen. Um, and I mean, it did. I don't think they ever really got it under control because even like the instances where, um, you know, like something bad really happened, or I don't want to say bad, but you know, like hits above the face and pushing on the ground and stuff like that. If they did call it, it was like a minor foul, you know, like they didn't upgrade it. And I know it's like you don't want to take the best players out the game, but if you if you got to call it to tell them, you know, hey, calm the fuck down, then you got to call it because it was just getting that much out of control. So it, yeah, I mean, the energy was nice, though. The energy in the stadium was nice. It was lit. Shay, what did you see on TV? X's and O's or hell environment. I mean, on the broadcast, you could see, like, and you know, people be getting the clips up at a moment's notice. Like, first five minutes in, I think I tweeted about it, where Angel was already talking. And Camilla, you all know how she do. She giggling because she like, well, shit, uh, this is just something that I'm used to. But <laughs> she be laughing that girl out so bad. It'd be so funny. That would make even matter. It, it, it looked on the broadcast, it looked like the refs didn't have control of the game like five minutes in. And I just, if they would have caught some of that stuff, 
people getting hit in the face before we got to the fourth quarter, we wouldn't have got to that point. But they didn't do that. So it's what happened. I think the ref should be under just as much fire as y'all want to put all these kids yes. up under. Yes. Especially when you see that ref that was in the middle of the fisticuffs, and she was like, well, shit, I don't get paid enough for this, so I'm going to go on here down to the yes. Panera. What y'all eating after this? Like, <laughs> yes, agreed, Shay. The and rest I, be- and if I'm the NCAA, that crew cannot ref together again. Nope. So slow. let's slow down. We're going to back up just a smidge. So for me, first half, LSU led the majority of the first quarter. South Carolina went on a late run and led the rest of the game. Why do you think South Carolina was able to stay in control of the game for the majority of the game this time? Because they buffed back. I think you honestly to start the game, South Carolina was giving the vibes of feeling it out. Like what are they allowing and what aren't they allowing? Mm -hmm. It was like, uh, okay, they're okay. All right, then. As soon as South Carolina said, all right, we're going to buck back. I'm like, you not finna little dog me. And that's when shit changed. Like, they just was like, nah, fuck that. And that was the difference. Because to be honest, at the when they played LSU at home, South Carolina never bucked back. They yep. were just like, you know, we're vibing. And we just going to keep grinding. And we just going to keep, you know, sticking it out. Um, but in this game, I'm I'm talking from top of like from raven all the way down they were like no you're not finna punk me not today that's how i feel i feel like but it's just when we talk about playing an lsu team though because of how they are the thing that they do they're, they're good basketball players right but the additive to them and them being so dominant is because they get in your head because they shit talking to beat a team like LSU, you one have to be talented, and you one you have to show up to the game like I'm, I'm that guy. You have to show up to the game with a with a chip on your shoulder, with a with a little extra armor on. You have to show up to the game to beat an LSU ready for that shit. You got you have to because that's how they, that's how they come. You know what I mean? That's one of the keys to the game. If I'm playing LSU, put your shit talking on um, pants on today. Put your thick skin on today. Come ready to talk some shit today. Come ready to defend yourself. Come ready to, you know what I'm saying? You got to show up like that to play in LSU. You're not going to beat an LSU team without that. And I think that's just what it is like. That's in the game preparation for an LSU team. So I don't, I, I just, in all of it, I'm just so confused at how the plot is lost. And now all of a sudden, South Carolina are the bullies because, if you ask any team in the NCAA, I'm pretty sure that they're – I would put money on it. Shit, I don't got a lot. And that's what they like to say. You ain't got no money. Guilty. I'm a teacher. Um, You have to show up to the game like you got to. So I, I just – that's part of the game plan. And like Yana said, that's what changed. A Malaysia brought her little ass in, and she came with that energy, and everybody followed, and that was a wrap. That's what happened. Yeah, I think – at watching it on TV, LSU was more focused on beating y'all up than actually mm-hmm. winning and playing basketball and trying mm-hmm. to actually win the game. They mm-hmm. was more focused on it. We going to big dog. We going to bully. We going to this, that, and the third. And the thing with South Carolina is they can play that game too. They're also better than you at scoring the basketball. So, like, you're not going to – you know what I'm saying? LSU was used to being like, oh, well, we going to big dog you and we going to win on top of it. And then yeah. they ran into the bigger dog. And now, look, they tuck in their tail. And I will say that's the difference between um, last year's team and this year's team. Like last year's team, you start, they start chirping and it's like their focus goes away. They like, they're more focused on chirping. And so it's kind of like they needed to be more grounded so they can just focus on the game plan. But this team is like, I can be grounded and focus on the game plan. And I can also chirp and focus on the game plan too. So you're not just finna be like, Little dogging me all game. Yeah, I think uh, 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 interesting to Shay's point. I think that the energy of when Angel said in the press conference, "We not scared of South Carolina." I think that 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 brings up two conversations. One team is the defending national champions that are marketed as the show, 
that have a swag about them, that have the energy about them, that says, you know, we have, we we coming with the shits type, type tease. South Carolina, Don has been very vocal about, you know, when this, earlier in the season, when the team did start to get involved in skirmishes or little, you know, conversations about how she didn't want that to be the culture of their program. And I think that's exactly how the game started. Like, you know, at South Carolina was very much, to Yana's point, filling out the game, you know, want, taking LSU's punches out the gate, um, you know, Angel. But I think, to me, the pivotal moment in the game was Angel going in front of the South Carolina bench and talking shit. Because she did it directly in front of Lay, yep. directly in front of Sanaya, directly in front of Tessa, and directly in front of Ashland. And as soon as that group got in the game, they made it their mission to bust their ass. Because as soon as Andrew did that, every single time Malaysia scored, she went directly to wherever, wherever Michaela Williams was on the court or on the bench, she was in her face. When um, uh, Sanaya or Ashlyn got a block, they was talking shit. Like it, that, that opening tidbit with Camilla created a demon and an energy that, that stayed like the lady sitting beside me in the game said before the game started because I was sitting behind the LSU bench. I'm getting to that later. Um, said you know it's gonna be a fight. Like before they saw the national before any of that, she said it's gonna be a fight today. And I was like, girl, talking about child. Like it's just hoops. But the more the game went on, it was just so thick. Like the tension, the it just. And for a game, again, that did not mean nothing, it felt like everybody wanted, like, it felt like a national championship. It felt like a national championship. And so, as we get later into the game, South Carolina's got, uh, I think, five to seven point lead with two minutes left in the game. Um, Malaysia picks um, Flaje's pockets and... Um, we got 18 million investigators that have different takes on the same video. So what are y'all thoughts? What are y'all's thoughts on what took place, um, the malice at Bonds to cause? I think what's interesting to me, and I'm going to preface this by saying, I don't think nobody should hit anybody. Wah, wah, wah. Like, it happens sometimes. I'm not saying anybody is right for hitting anybody. Let me just preface it with that. My next thing is, what's good good for the for uh, goose is good for the gander. You cannot. LSU has been known for the last two seasons. I'm yelling. I'm yelling in your face. I'm with your little hair. You suck. You suck with your little hair. With your little hair. You're not built like that. You're not built like that. You suck. You suck. Um, yelling in people's face. Little and bro. You know what I'm saying? And it's cool. Like that's what y'all wanted. That's the show. That's what we do. That's how y'all got all of these these NIL coins. Cool. Everybody fine. That's LSU. That's y'all brand of basketball. Do y'all. Like, everybody don't like it. Cool. The thing is, like I said, when you're a coach, because if I'm a coach, I've been a coach. If I'm preparing my girls for a team like LSU, I'm letting them know, you you going to have to put your, like I said, put your thick skin on, put your big girl panties on. You might have to talk some shit. You might gotta do what you gotta do, but you you got you to to beat an LSU team, you cannot be weak. You are gonna have to go out there with some energy. You just are. You just are. So now you've met a team that has matched that energy. I'm yelling in your face. I'm 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 saying this and I'm saying that. Now it's an issue. You know what I mean? Like you can't. Like I I watched a clip and I like Flage. Like sorry. You, I've watched a clip where Flage is standing over people. I was at the games all weekend when Flage is yelling and, and this and that and this and that. So now, as Ashlyn is on the way to the bench, she yelling and, and because you're frustrated, because you know you're about to lose, you're a little on edge. You're a little on edge. So now that you, Ashlyn is walking to the bench because cause Breezy, who knows, Raven kind of like tapped her like, you good, you know what I'm saying? Which is another thing, child. Breezy, I think, said something. Ashlyn yelling, walk to the bench, but you're you're so frustrated now because you done came into this game, hyped yourself up, thinking I'm finna whoop that ass to a win, and I deserve this win, which is cool. Now you mad, so you chuck Ashlyn. You you know what I mean? Like you can't you whether I want you to hit the girl, you can't do that. Like or you can, whatever, but. That's what y'all literally do 
every single game and have been doing for every single game the past two seasons. So now that you have found a team or you found a team for a half that has matched that energy because you're frustrated, you can't handle it. Am I okay with you being frustrated? Sure. Am, 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 do I, am I saying that Ashlyn needs to be in your face? It depends on who you ask. But what I am saying is you can't do something um, seven days out of the week and now somebody match your energy and you mad. That's something that you just going to have to, you got to eat that. You got to charge, you, that you got to charge that to the game. That's part of, charge, I, shit, I got to charge it to the game. Shit, I do that, charge it to the game, charge it to the game. That's what you got to do. But you can't, you can't do that and then now you mad. So once again, am I saying that Ashley should have did all that, 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 that? That's depending on who you ask. But what I am saying is you can't do something every single day and now you mad. We talk about, well, my mama said, you don't let you, you know, if you that big, you don't hit nobody. But my mama said, don't do others, um, don't do unto others that you don't want done unto you. Okay? And if you can't take nobody hollering in your face, then you don't need to do that shit to nobody else. And now they done pulled your card. So if I was scouting and I got to play out in a tournament, I'm going to be like, yell at them hoes. They're going to get mad. <laughs> do it. Pull that card. Pull them. Pull them. Pull them. They're not about that life. Like, you, you can't. You can that's what I don't like. Like if you're gonna do it, do it. If we're gonna get live, get live. But you can't, you can't you can't switch it up. That's just not how it works. So once again, am I saying ass and shit yell in the face? Depend on who you ask. But what Lauren Dreer is saying, Big Low, don't what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Don't do something if you can't take it. Do one to others that you won't done unto you. And now that you've shown that you can't take it, all the bullshit need to stop. All the bullshit stop. Cause you can't handle it. That's it. And also, while I'm on my tangent, do I think that Angel should have got up and fought? No. But at the same time, don't carry yourself as this woman as I'm from Baltimore. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that if that's not what you're really about. I'm not because you do got status. You're going to lose all your money if you do that. And we ain't trying to lose our money. I feel that. I feel that. But don't be acting like you're going to if you're not. Then. Just right. Just vibe. Just vibe. That's it. That's all. So am I saying anybody should have fall? Anybody should have put their hands on nobody? No, that ain't what I'm saying. But what I am saying is, come correct. Come correct. Period. Period. Yana. Jay. Uh, I mean, I agree with what Lo said 100%. If y'all going to be the big dogs, do it when it's time. But to me, the overarching issue with LSU is they're insecure, and I know y'all going to feel a way about it. They are insecure about the championship because they know they didn't go through South Carolina to get it. That is the overarching issue. Oh, shit. So every time South Carolina come in the room, they get to tucking their chain in and hiding their tail because they know that the big, the real big dog is on the floor. That's their problem. So when we get to the games and there's, oh, I'm all in your face, I'm barking, I'm this, that, and the third, and then when that energy is matched, now it's we are, woe is me, we are the victims, it's respectability politics and all types of shit. My other issue with Ellis is the posts that have happened after is I don't understand where this classism and elitism is coming from, but just because you got a couple dollars in your pocket also NIL, A, you don't know what nobody else is making, B, Money don't make you no better than nobody else. It don't mean you got more to lose than nobody else. It don't change nothing for you. I don't really understand where all of this elitism is coming from, especially since your account is over here asking people for donations for the church fund so y'all can go across the seas next year. But even in that, if you know you, oh, you got more to lose, or oh, then stop acting like that then. Oh, well, that don't, too. That too. Don't, don't, don't be in nobody's face calling nobody little hair and telling them they suck if, if, if you know you got, cause y'all do got stuff to lose. I yeah, I get it, but you can then then which one is it? Like exactly. it just can't be both, and it's so off putting. But and I try not to have these conversations in mixed company because some people are so goddamn racist that they take it to the wrong thing. So it's hard for me to have these conversations. But you can't, you can't. It's just a cognitive dissonance, and I keep saying it. But what's how is this okay for this, but this not okay for this? Like I, I'm just, I'm just tired. The conversations are are, are, are tired. I, I just no. To, I and to your point, Lo, they know that there are certain conversations that cannot be had in mixed company. Mm -hmm. and, and I want so it. it is very much a oh we gonna hide behind this thing because we know 
it's mixed company around. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah, my and that's third, why I, I refuse because you're not going to come in my comments calling nobody no thug or this. No, don't do that. Okay? Don't. The third so I don't, issue I have is I see a lot of people trying to post these things of Camilla trying to make her out to be this violent whatever person. And the context that is missing is that Camilla is very much subjected to the things that like Brittany Griner and Tierra McCowan are, which is they are bigger than everybody else. And so when they are in the game, people think that they can slap them, push them, mm -hmm. punk them, pull their hair, do all of this. And it rarely gets called because it's, oh, she's six, seven. She's six, mm -hmm. eight. She's bigger than everybody. She should be able to take it. And then when that six, eight, six, seven girl turn around and is fed up and tells you about yourself, then, oh, well, why would she do that? She's bigger than her. She did that in the third. No, it wasn't no problem when y'all was back. We got multiple videos of Angel elbow, elbowing her in the face, pulling her hair, all of this stuff. And what did Camilla do? She kept playing. She kept playing. But the moment that she had had enough and y'all was pushing on people, the big dog stepped up. So I'm tired of y'all trying to paint Camilla as this terrible person. And also, Talking about ice and all of that, you you can kiss my ass, like for real. Cause that's weird. Playing basketball and trying to be xenophobic over a shove, not a punch. Ain't nobody get jumped. You want people <laughs> deported? It, it's it's like y'all are very nasty. So th this this is a a take I just wanted to contribute to the argument. If anybody that's played an organized sport you're always taught that your teammates are your family. You say your sisters, your brothers, your ever. Whoever you, whoever's on your team, that's your family. If somebody touch your teammate, you're supposed to step up for your teammate, correct? Yeah, Kimoki agrees. Okay. So if that, if that is the, the way that we all know sports are, I really want people to like really step back and think about how this all unfolded. Okay? So... Flage intentionally fouls Malaysia. Whether her intent was good, bad, or indifferent, she intentionally fouled her on a fast break layup. Okay. In the video, there, as Malaysia's walking past, Breezy Hall and Ashlyn walk towards um, well, Ashlyn sort of runs towards, says something to Flage. Ashlyn does the little power muscle flex position. Okay. Flage. It, they are describing it as a push from the side where I was on, which was LSU side, which is also where Camilla was. Her right elbow was elevated. And if you look at the two different camera angles, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So from Camilla's side of the court, it looks like a, either a swing or a high elbow. Okay. She does not take 15 seconds. She don't take 10 seconds within the span of two seconds. She takes her six, seven ass. And 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 charges Flage. Flage hits the floor. Okay. In that time frame, there are three refs in 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 that area. Don's right there in the area. Kim Mulkey and her starters. Anissa runs all the way up to the function like she gonna swing. And HBO also does that. Okay. All women or whoever the refs are. Your Flage's brother proceeds to step over a woman. Onto the court, touch Camilla uh, at her jersey, and then stand as if he's going to fight or protect Flaje. While all that's happening, Flaje has already gotten up off the floor because Camilla didn't proceed to follow that push up with any punches. Mm -hmm. Flaje is already moving towards Camilla, cursing, and Raven is holding her back. So the two things I want to discuss here is one, how can Camilla elevate a situation or do something worse than anyone else without something happening prior to it? Because in any situation, the next step is always an escalation. So if there was no intentional foul, then none of this happens. If there was no um, Ashlyn yelling, there this doesn't happen. If there was no Flage elbow, this happens. And then we finish with, if there was no Camilla push. You cannot look to the push and say the push is the most egregious thing to happen. Period. Because at the end of the day, your coach said it, and we've seen y'all do it. 
if somebody bothers your teammate, you show up for that teammate in whatever capacity you deem is right. Now, we all know the rules say that's wrong. So did, did she need to be ejected Absolutely. and suspended right. for the next game? Absolutely. Right. You're not going to hear me say nothing different. When she pushed the child, I already knew it was a wrap. She was out the door. But what you cannot do is try to police and say what is a good type of um, – aggression what's a good type of energy on the court if you're not going to police that energy all year right. because if lsu can come into games and there's video footage of three of their teammates standing over a player from queen's university after a block shot and that not lead to a fight or we still see them egging on the tiktok dance that was done against diamond battles in georgia you you can't you cannot police responses to disrespect I don't care what nobody says. Yes, the rules can police those responses, but y'all don't get to come on Twitter making Camilla some villain if you're not going to add context. And I think it's actually a saint in asinine that some of y'all that are LSU fans are doing it because just last year we watched Angel Reese be vilified for doing the exact same shit Caitlin Clark did, but because she's a black woman, the world did not receive it the same way. So now y'all are trying to do Camilla, a Brazilian woman, the same way Iowa fans did Angel last year. If Angel can do it, Camilla can do it. If Caitlin can do it, Angel can do it. We, you don't get to make up new rules about it. And add to that, as a woman of status, to continue to sit on Twitter after the incident and tweet about Camilla, be shady about Camilla, and talk shit about Camilla through your likes as a woman of status, that's nasty. Here. But it, but but here's my thing. Like, from what Kim Moki said, Angel would do the same thing for her teammates. So I, I'm just not sure how you shading Camilla. You think you better than Camilla? Cool, great. Both of y'all got a lot to work on if we keep it in the book, and both of y'all gonna be high traffic. So samezies, right? But what what you would have done is well, child. Never mind. <laughs> and, and the fact and, and the fact that y'all like. The fact that the mom got on Facebook and Instagram today and tried to throw Bree Hall and Ashton under the bus while simultaneously applauding her son for jumping on the court to fight some women is crazy. And let me also say, for those of you that seem to conveniently post my mugshot, I make sure you keep that mugshot up because one was convicted and the other one was not. Since, since y'all like to post it every day and get your big one, let's make sure you do that. Okay, because if you on the TL applauding him for standing up for his sister, make sure you do the same thing for all parties anytime there is a, a police involved. Okay? And, and that's my so, thing. Like, I just feel like, how can you be okay and understand this man flying over the stands to come protect his sister, but you can't understand Camilla coming in to protect her sister? Like, even with even more context, we've known since uh, senior day, like they've told Camilla's story about how she came over here basically by herself. And, you know, her family hasn't seen her play in person and all this stuff. Like, this is her family. Like, Period. this is her family. So we, like, I've said it before, me and my sister, we laugh at it all the time. Camilla's Big Mike from Blindside. Like, that baby will let you beat her down in a game yep. and laugh. She will let you hit her in the face. She will let you pull her hair. But as soon as you come for one of her teammates, she steps in. And that's the context that people are missing in their little videos that they've been trying to share to paint Camilla in this bad light. Everybody kind of snips and tries to take these little pieces and say, now look what she did. But look what happened before the situation happened. Rewind it and let's play the full clip. And then on top of that, Camilla done played like 100 plus games in her career. 100, I want to say maybe 125 college games, if that. And these, there's three incidents you can point to in college. Three, three. Yeah, I just, it's just, it's just very picking and choosing, and I, and I, and I just, I just don't like that. And the biggest thing for me is just, you just can't, you just can't be mad when you do this every single day. You can't. You but can't. The, the thing is, is that no, no one seems to be in all of these arguments. Seem to understand how all of this is anti-black. Okay. Like, no one seems to understand that. A white woman, after seeing two black women 
or two women of color, you know, do something on the court that she immediately knew could embarrass their reputation, could mar, as ESPN has been saying, the game, who could, you know, put a bad outlook on women's hoops as it's trying to go. She immediately chose to say, you know what? I'm going to talk to the student athlete that wasn't on my team. I'm going to address the media twice and and apologize. Did she need to apologize? No. Do do people think it was respectability politics for her to do it? I'm sure they do. But the reason she had to do it is because her colleague, a white woman who has built her success off the black of black women, chose to take that moment and use it as an opportunity to push one of her her players to fight another player for for hoops. What? For hoops. And and I've also been hesitant to say this because LSU fans, once again, they do the most and they think every everybody's a hater. But I, I retweeted a tweet today that says, maybe I'm not a hater. I'm just unimpressed. I'm just unimpressed. I, well. the way that Kim Mulkey positions Angel, and even though, like, and this, is why I don't have Ooh, get into it. this is why I don't have a conversation in mixed company because as a black woman, I can layer these conversations and say as a as an older black woman, like a like a big sis, like an auntie, hey, maybe you should chill, right? But also as a big sis of our auntie, whatever you want to call it, I can say, Kim Mulkey, Angel is not your motherfucking pawn. Stop talking about her. And this and this is the duality because as much as Angel frustrates me, at the same time I ride for her, I, I, I got to. She is not your pawn, Angel. You don't get to say, oh, I. I I wish she would have did that, Angel. For what? So Angel can fight? You know what I'm saying? So she can't lose her status. So she can use these, lose these things that have built this this young woman up to probably help her family to change her life. You're gonna say, oh, I, I wish it was her. So something like, what do you, what, 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 Kim? And then the the show the cl- other clip or your duality the way you can't completely contradicting yourself. Well, yeah, Angel, Angel wasn't gonna have that. Angel did this. Who the fuck do you think Angel is to you? What do you think Angel is? I don't, I don't like it. And I just wish these babies and these parents could see it. Angel, as much as I feel like, I don't want to say quote unquote, the fight was her fault because the two people pushed each other, whatever, but the energy in the game was started with her and she didn't do anything. That pisses me off, but I understand because of the status thing. But Angel, that lady, you are not that woman pie. Like, you don't get to say, Angel, you need to do this. And Angel would have did. Angel would have. Why are you even putting her in that position, girl? Like, you know she got a lot. Of, I, 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 it's just so. That's why I don't have these conversations in mixed company because it's just so much duality in the situation. And it, it's just as much as she, it, Angel can irritate me sometimes with stuff she do. She don't deserve that either. It's just, girl, it's, oof. It's, and it's also interesting to me to see that in the aftermath of this situation, Everyone in sports media have have gone out of their way to say, "Oh, Don, that you're just such a you're so classy. You're you are just uh you know what to do in every situation. You know how to handle all this stuff." And my issue with that is is just last year, a head coach got on an interview and called Don's players street fighters. None of you jumped to her defense. None of you were there to provide facts. None of you were there to speak up about her character and the character of her players. That team ended up losing to Iowa. And in that same time period, we saw what happened between Caitlin and Angel and all the racism that followed. And we saw people like Ryan Clark get on their podcast and, and say, whoa, look at me. I'm supporting women's hoops because I have Angel on my network, okay? Now, a year later, we see South Carolina play LSU. These are two predominantly Black programs, one with a Black coach, one with a white coach. At no point in any of this has any of those same people that is called Don Classy, that has said the, all the things that she does well, has taken this time to call out Kim Mulkey for being the opposite of Classy. And I think it's very convenient, and I think it's it speaks to this climate of hoops, that it does not matter if you can do whatever you want when you have somebody like Kim Mulkey there to eat up the hype. 
because what she said in that press conference was very similar to the way that Trump positions himself in American society. Above the rules, get people back, break, call people sissies, um, lie, lie regularly, say, say one thing one time, then change it, attack the media and the reporters that come report for you, oh, call shit, people out, yeah. and then and then position yourself as an underdog or position yourself as a victim. This same lady let the world speak ill of Angel for almost a month or for a few weeks while Angel was suspended from the team or away from the team. That same player that got all the all, everything thrown at her, said the girl was smart, blah, da 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 all this, you now follow that situation up by putting her in a position to have to then come out and make a tweet and saying, well, actually, I wasn't involved in the skirmish because my knee was aching and I got status. You are literally forcing her to put herself in a position to say, well, I would have fought if my knee didn't hurt or I would have fought if I didn't make so much money. Yeah, she just, I just, I wish, I wish the girls could see it. And, I, and if, if, and I know the girls hate when we say this, but if Don had had parents on social media arguing earlier this season, um, a player sister, a player sibling jumping onto the court, uh, now another player's mom back on Twitter or back on social media doing this, they would say that Don Steady had a culture issue, period. And they should. They should. Speak and on I'm it. not saying they shouldn't because they absolutely should because what are you doing? But because it's her... No, it's just, and when I say nobody, of course, it's people on Twitter saying it, right? So when I say nobody, I don't mean completely nobody. I mean, these these big outlets, these big media outlets, these media outlets in women's basketball or in sports in general, you know, that, that necessarily matter. And I just, I just, it's just, it's just so, it's just so layered. And, 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 and even in that, and, and even in the whole situation, as bad as it's got dragged out because of narratives and because of how things handle certain things. I don't think Flage is a bad person. I don't think Camilla's a bad person. The great they fine. Shit happens. <laughs> it's not that deep. On the grand scheme of things, none of it is that at like at the very base of the issue, it's not that deep. Flage, it just it happens. You know what I mean? Like Camilla, it happens. But it's just it's just nasty. And I just and I, and I think I'm so glad you said that. Like, and I think that's what to me is the overarching thing is that we, we, we are watching the sport grow in real time. Like we are watching the masses start to watch and support. And with the masses starting to watch and support, of course, there are going to be ill intentions mm -hmm. with anything that happens. Mm -hmm. And in this situation, like just as a, a sport, shit like that happens, right? Yeah. Like we see the men, we see the MNBA people have something happen every night. Now there are certain instances, instances when things are egregious. Mm -hmm. Draymond Green, Green choking a player, mm -hmm. or put, like literally closed fist punching a teammate in a practice. Right. Those are egregious. But pushing, a little cursing here and there, a little getting in your face, that happens in who? Right. Literally nothing wrong with it, in my opinion. I mean, you call the tech, call the foul, and keep it pushing. But for me, not only Mulkey, but overtime women's basketball. Some of these other pages that are here to grow the game and promote the sport literally are retweeting stuff, talking about or reposting, um, um, laughing about the brother going to slide on players. Like it, it, it baffles me to to see a sport where they won't cover basic good hoops. We we it take it's taken months. These people ain't posted Audie Crooks. All season, uh, I, no, they ain't posted the story of Iowa State's freshman. Uh, that's a beautiful story. That's that's a team that doesn't get a lot of hoopla and hype in the middle of the country in Iowa with a fantastic story of a team that's playing that has five freshmen that are now about to lose a big <laughs> championship. But that's fine. That you can post that. But because you're so worried about clicks and virality and all these things you you literally refuse to take care of the sport mess is gonna happen you don't need to create and conjure up extra shit 
in order in order to get the likes and the views. And if that is what you're doing with the game, you should step you should step away, in my opinion, because you, simply talking about the incident was going to get enough retweets. Right. But you are literally promoting a player's brother beating touching or contacting a woman and then there was a man on the TL yesterday was like well actually he didn't do that much his ass y'all been bitches out there. Got, what the hell like what these was the bitches purpose? got on here they got on here and said cancel court storming because a fan inadvertently bumped into Caitlyn after a win the, the fans are celebrating a win we got M.A. Vopo, Rebecca Lobo and everybody in between saying oh god the students are not should never be on the court. The end court storming. None of these motherfuckers have said shit about a player's brother making contact with Camilla and facing her as if he's gonna fight her over some pushing. And that's my thing. Like we watched that whole little and it wasn't a brawl. Like I hate people calling it a brawl, and it really wasn't a fight. It was a shoving match. And it wasn't even that. It was like maybe three pushes involved with the entire thing. And like it it wasn't that deep. Yeah, your sister got knocked off her feet. She just gonna have to take that one on the chin. Like, I mean, hey. to the game. <laughs> like yeah, people, people got knocked off their feet in regular fashion. I'm saying, hell, Camilla right. got her hair pulled and tripped and laughed about it, right? So, like, you just gonna have to take that one on the chin. But the fact that you like ran up on the court, what was your like? What was the plan? What were you going to do? Protect her from what? Like, and that's what annoys me about um what Ford's mom posted on social today. That's what annoys me so much is because one, I hated the fact that she decided to say that those girls involved don't have anything to lose or they have less to lose than my daughter because that tells me that you already think you're like they're beneath your child that's what that's what that tells me because you don't know their pockets you don't know their situations you don't know what deals they have because they don't flaunt it on social media constantly you don't know what they got going on and you don't know what they have to lose so to say that that's messed up two to make it seem like they were about to jump her is insane come on push that girl down and turn Camilla was like, all right, girl. Yep, I did it. And what? And then she went about her day. She didn't need nobody holding her back. Like, nobody was trying to jump her. If anything, after the push happened, Flaja was more of the one that kept trying to get back at Camilla after the push, which is fine because, you know, she pushed you. You wanted to get your lick back. So, yeah, you probably needed to be pulled away. But... Nobody was about to attack her. There was enough people around to separate the situation and make sure everybody was good. And so her brother running in there, to me, only escalated everything. And we're not even acknowledging the fact that her brother was the one that made it over. There were two other men coming behind him that yep. people don't even acknowledge. But when you look at the video and up. they zoom in, there's two other men coming by. What, what, what was the plan? What the fuck were you going to do? What was the plan? Because I can only think of one thing, regardless of what they say, I can only think of one thing you had in mind to jump over some stands to get at a woman. Like, the fuck is wrong with you? And and the mis and to me, the misogyny of it all for, like, I watched the first take segment, and both Shannon and um, the other man, um, Shay Shay, <clears throat> that's the same person, <laughs> Stephen A and Shannon were like, well, I can kind of understand you know, a brother wants to protect his sister. And I have to like really like sit in that and just say, what, what did, because he don't look no taller than, um, Flaugé. Flaugé. Flaugé bigger than he what, is. <laughs> what did he, as a man, think that his presence on the court amongst women was going to do to protect his sister in any way? Because even if you're saying that's instinct, that would mean that when your sister gets a hard foul, your first instinct is to jump off the floor. That would mean when um, another player says something to Flaw J, your first instinct is to, you cannot take hood rules and apply them to no fucking basketball. Right, one of the biggest Be stages, like what? Like you you just can't do it because if, if you're going to apply those hood rules to the hoops, the hood says, if you get in my face and pull my hair, I got to beat you on sight. So you you can't pick it like Lo was saying earlier. You cannot pick and choose when you want to apply these moral principles to the shit. Because if you rapping about the apartheid, our apartheid, you ain't even got hood principles. This boy, on, on, yeah. on, this boy, this boy on Twitter singing love songs with a nose ring. 
Like, if you don't take that shit somewhere else with that weak ass auto tune, like, no, you're not even not about that life. Let me go listen. I'm just saying. But, you, like, he's not even about that life. So, for the mother to even do all this and completely disregard her son's involvement and then try to make him some damn martyr because he spent one night in Greenville, like, and from what I read on the charges, they didn't even, the Miller should have pressed charges on his ass because he grabbed her damn titty. It's not funny. Shit. Uh, and, 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 and like, let's be the most, fuck, like, all these people got family members that, that are dear at the game. If, you know, if, 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 if any situation was room and space for a family member to jump on the court about disrespect, somebody would have been on the court in the first, first quarter when Angel pulled the girl hair and then later busted her lip and then start pointing to it, laughing at it. But then her mama will get on Twitter and be like, well, actually, they're close friends. It's just hoops. Like, you don't get to do that. I don't care. You do not get to show your ass and try to embarrass me on no court and then after the game be like, oh, like, let's take a picture together. Like, that shit's fake. Like, don't do that. Yeah, We got somebody on stage. Go ahead, girly. Oh, hey, guys. First, hey. I want to say, Flage ass needs to be suspended for the first game. Don't care how nobody feel about it because like y'all been saying, had it not been for her, none of this would have started. And really, Angel as well. Second, I want to acknowledge the fact that Don was the only coach. I just hopped back in here, so I don't know if y'all talked about this. But the fact that Don went out her way to protect Flage and mm-hmm. share what she didn't have to share publicly about Flage coming to her. So for Flage's mom, because this is what pissed me off, I really want to address the adults because, bitch, I'm not talking about no kids. Let's talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> you took your ass on Instagram and tried to blame Breezy, somebody who literally don't bother nobody for literally walking back to the stands to her team and tried to make it seem like she taunted your child who was was taunting our players this entire time. Your child has not even publicly came out her mouth to everybody and said, you know what? I shouldn't have hit Ashlyn. If you guys look at the playback, you can literally see Morticia Adams mouthing, Flaugé, when she hit Ashlyn. Like, come on now. Why? Why are we And I'm going to get on more to the ass in a second. I'm so glad you brought her up. And see, the fact that Don came out her mouth and protected Flage and Kim, Kim Mulkey didn't even say anything to protect her players. Flage, I, I love her style of game. Literally before the game even happened, I tweeted and I said, I'm so glad we get to do this with LSU because I'm not a hater. Like, I love a lot the way that a lot of those girls on that team play. Good basketball is good basketball. Fuck the NIL shit. Fuck the fact that we're playing against each other. I love to see our SC, our SEC girls compete. The fact that Flage has still not opened up her notes app and wrote out how she contributes to this is crazy to me. And for her mom to be on here acting like she's this big mama and I'm she sorry. Gonna put it behind Bispo, some I hate beat. to shade you, baby. But you not no lotto, poo. And we've known you since the rap game. And for your mom to think that she's just this monumental manager and you were still complaining about the fact that lotto and Cardi pulled Angel in the video over you when you mattered just as much to that team. Like, come on, I need y'all to wake up. I need y'all to wake up. I, I fuck with the way that Angel play. Anissa, like all of them. I think that they're great players. But if them parents don't learn to shut the fuck up, they're going to ruin their kids' future. Like, they are the problem. Well. And that's all I have to say. Oh, and by the way, I don't like how people are trying to make it seem like, I've seen people say, like, Don encouraged this type of thing, or, like, where did they get that from? You can't track one, one well, let's pull it back, maybe a couple years ago, where people, but uh, USD has a history of not bothering people unless people bother them. And you can't keep poking the bear and expecting people not to say anything. But as someone who works with these girls on their own personal projects outside of here, every single time I've been involved with anything pertaining to these players, Don is involved in their lives outside of things that pertain to basketball. And I've witnessed it myself. I just tweeted about it because I helped Raven with her birthday shoot. The fact that Don even cared enough to want to be a part of that, to check on her player, that speaks volumes for the relationships that she has. Kim Mulkey literally further embarrassed Angel about her great situation earlier. And we all watched y'all tear her down. Like, I, I don't understand how they don't understand the concept of family, but understand the concept of family when Flage brother decided to jump over that table. Like, you don't get the picky. You just don't. 
Period. So that's all Take I have to okay. play. Wait, tell us your name and where you from. <laughs> I'm Cece and I'm from Columbia, so I'm right up here. Period. And we'll, and we'll pull up if somebody wanted to do something because I don't play about Oh my, my God. Name. Amen. 803. <laughs> Period. Period. Oh. Period. Well, shit. I don't know what else to say. Oh, Morticia. I'm a, this is my last Thank one. You, I Cece. Promise, I promise. Um, what, what no really, like, what really got me yesterday? I, I, audacity is one thing, but this woman is not even a coach on the staff. You are there for NIL. And the first issue is you there for NIL, but the only people making money is Big Four and Angel. Because the girl that y'all recruited to come there to make some money off of some Doritos um, and some Reese's Cups in, in the, in the, in the, ain't making no money. Ain't making no beats. Ain't selling no hair care. Ain't getting no likes on TikTok. That's my first issue. So you miss NIL Mammy, and you not making a shake for everybody on the team. That's the first thing. Because y'all asking for money. Dolores said, I ain't getting no whoop de on my phone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's the first thing. That's the first thing. So you bad at your job. Okay. That, that's, that's, you bad at your job. Okay. Then for you to get on Instagram, post a video of Camilla. In a in in with Brazil, and and then tag Satu as a way to show a pattern. And now that video is being used by several people in your fan base to try to call Camilla violent and volatile. Is nasty, especially when you consider this woman comes to the games every day looking like Trish Stratus off of WWE back in two thousand one. Especially when you consider that she, she literally, the only reason why she got that job is because she was a former player for Kim Mulkey at um, La Tech and got tea there that I'm not going to spill. But baby, keep it cute and impressors before I push them cards. Okay, what's the song? Push my buttons. I'm pushing them buttons. Because what y'all not going to continue to do is, is these coaches and these assistants acting like Twitter fans. Because if, if it ain't no rules to apply to y'all, I'm going to treat y'all like I do y'all fans and drag your asses, okay? So either keep it cute on Twitter or be ready for this smoke. Don't follow me because I, I saw you follow me, sister, Morticia. I saw you. Don't do not do that with my kids. Don't do that. Yeah. And that's been my thing with this entire situation. Like, I like you like you said on here already, like the kids, their kids, they're you know, they're college kids. Um, the emotions were high. They every like everything happened, move on from it, right? But it's the adults, like, and it's really the adults from one side, the assistant coaches, the parents, like you and you and it's them coming for college kids. And so to me, it's like, all right now, like. If one of these other parents pull up and start, like, if the, on the South Carolina side, if they start chirping, I don't see nothing wrong with it. If they start releasing the shit that they know, I don't see nothing wrong with it. Because... Because if last time, I checked, last time I checked, Miss Mamas that's trying to bring Breezy into this situation was just on the TL telling the world that Angel can't pass her pet classes was just on the TL. Another mom from that program was just on the TL saying the girls was fighting in the locker room. Okay? Right. But if I ran with that, so if then, I ran with that T, I would be wrong. Right. So then that's so what we talk about patterns. We got to start talking about all the patterns and we're going to do that. And that's and that goes back to my initial point. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. You can't do something and not expect it to be coming back. Dr. Sterling, mute your mic, sir. You cranking up the car, pushing the windshield wipers on, getting dead. Yeah, you just gotta. I just, it just, it just could have been him. Yep. Hello? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I just wanted to say one thing. I don't know if y'all, I've been listening to the spaces for a while, and I don't know if you, you all got to hear uh, Coach uh, Staley's show earlier tonight. But they, uh, during her, they had her their Carolina call show uh, with her, and the SEC contacted her to inform her that um, after reviewing the tape, they they um, admitted that Flage should have been ejected also. And 
that this after the this after the time you know they can't do anything about it because it was the officials that were supposed to eject them. But I don't want to see any of them f- officials at any of our games throughout this tournament. Agreed. Because it's too much of uh, we can't n- name the officials. We can't do anything. You know, we can't speak about the officials. No, we don't want anybody questioning them in the press or after the game and all that. And then you have something like this. Um, and they noted that they saw uh, Flage actually make contact with Watkins. So I just wanted to share that. I'm 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 a mute my mic and listen. Uh, I just right. wanted to share that. Thank, Thank you, Doctor you. Sterling. We appreciate you. All right. <laughs> What's up, Reba? Hey, how y'all doing? Um, hey. I have two questions. Um, yes. The first one, um, y'all were talking about how Kim Mulkey uses Angel as like uh, her prop or something. Do yeah, you that was- think that's why Alexis Morris has such a complicated relationship with Kim Mulkey? Because she did the same to her and then she's, now she's like kind of thrown her away. Um, if I'm gonna keep it above, I don't engage with Alexa Morris because I think it's I think she has um bigger issues that I, I don't I'm not gonna she speak does. on. But yeah, so I don't <laughs> I don't do too much or I don't even I try to ignore her as best I can because I think she got a little more going on and I don't want to be nasty, you know. Yeah, I'm with low on that. I don't I think Alexis yeah, there's a lot going on that is beyond social yeah. media, and I just mm-hmm. hope that you know things are being worked out for her. Yeah. And uh, the second question, do you think this year's South Carolina team is at an advantage because there aren't, um, you know, I won't say a slave, but there aren't uh, attached to that we have to be nice girl narrative like the previous team was? Correct. I don't even, do you feel like, I don't even feel like those, the freshies were t- I don't, particularly attached to it. I don't, think they, I think, can, that's I don't think they consider it. I don't think they consider it at all. I, like, I think this year's team is just whoever we got to play, we want to beat them. How we beat them is how we beat them, yeah. but whoever we play. And I think each of them are confident, but, like, I think the difference is that their sisterhood, like, when Ali and them played, like, when you got half the team mamas doing press circles before the game, <laughs> you know ain't nobody going to swing. Like, you already know that. Like, I'm going to give it to God, you know footstool type energy these girls got mamas that go to church on sundays but also might you know be touch out on tuesday like it's just a completely different vibe and i think ultimately like if you don't mess with us we're not gonna mess right. with you but if you mess with us because th- if you if you go back and look at the game they was not on no rah-rah stuff to start the game they weren't and i think because e- even if you go back to the unc game Ashlyn didn't turn up until the girl put, you know, like you, if you don't provoke somebody, they're not going to do nothing back. And I think that's what Twitter's the issue on Twitter is. That's issue in sports is people do a lot of stuff and try to hide the hands and then play tattletale and snitch, but don't want to talk about what they did and what they said. Yeah. And this team not letting it's you very, get away with it. You're not going to, you're not going to hit me. You're not going to touch me. not going to poke me or none of that. And, and think I'm gonna let it slide because if Camilla don't get you back, Ashlyn will. If Ashlyn don't get you back, Lay will, and and so forth and so forth. And on. I think Raven is. Go ahead. I also <laughs> think like I think Lay is the what you got it like not the linchpin. She's the one that she's the one who I read to see what energy is given. Because one thing about Lay, and I think even Don's probably had to have this realization with Lay. Lay gonna chill and Lay gonna just hoop if she gotta do that. She always gonna do like a little flex at nobody on the baseline right but the way that you can tell it's people trying it is how they start acting when they start giving it to the girls and don allows her to give it to the girls that's how i know something something somebody saying something because lay she she the one that's how you always gonna know because she when she started as soon as she got on the court she started looking at the bench and she started doing other stuff and i'm like she do a little flexing on the baseline but they don't do all of that so I think Lego is the, always the first telltale sign that's going to give it back to him. That's how I can tell. Yeah, and they're also showing, like, the replay on the uh, SEC network right now. And Camilla had a busted lip before that push, so I don't know yep. where it happened. Yep. Um, and it looks like Haley kind of, I don't know if she I do. Her, but she I know like, exactly like where it happened at. 
Uh, yes, footage. Angel yeah. was posting up, and this would have been probably the second or third time that she hit Camilla um, above the neck while posting up, and that's where she busted her lip, and then she proceeded to taunt her about it after she did it. Yeah, I also... I will say this. Nah, y'all know I ain't no Haley Van Lee fan. Never have. <laughs> Not Haley. But let me tell you one thing about that Miss Haley Van Lift. Haley Van Lift was TTG. Haley Van Lift was the only one that ran in there and, and got a little hit off. She got it. Haley still on business. I don't care what nobody say. Y'all know she's not my favorite. But Miss HBL stood on business. Anissa ran off. No, she did. didn't. No, no, yes, she did. She kind of did. did. I love she, she, she got she her did. little hit in. But when, when, when um, Camilla. She, no, like, yes, uh, no. Haley Van Lift stood on business. <laughs> Haley Van Lift went in the belly of the beast and got a hit in. I, and, and then I, she and realized what she did and was like, oh. <laughs> but but oh. guess what? But guess what? Anissa ran up and stopped like somebody was holding her back. Just Haley, like the Haley, She's a woman of status. Huh? She's a woman of status. Yes, she's, and Haley Van Lift don't, but she is a white woman, so it's a little different. It's different. It is. Her, daddy was, her daddy was in the stands <laughs> acting but, a But at the very end of the day, I will say Haley Van Lift did go in the belly of the beast, and she tried to do something. She stood on business. I don't and Haley Van Lift is actually lucky that Camilla wasn't on, you know, rage, because once Camilla <laughs> saw her, she she let it go. She yeah, saw she Haley push her and she let it go. So if she was really on some rah rah shit, she really could have got Haley Van Lift. She had yeah. a right pin. Yeah, nah, was, that yeah. Haley shit board. was funny to me because like she ran over there, you know, she pushed her, and Camilla kind of looked down and was like, "Oh, oh girl, me. please!" And <laughs> Ashley kind of like shoved her out the way, like, "Girl, go on somewhere, get." It. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, they did. They did, like, they did. They was kind of like, oh, girl, please. But that's not the point. <laughs> she did, did y'all see Samaya with the bad ACL? Trying to she get tried, to the, though. To the fisticuff? Yeah, I was, sit, I was sitting right behind her bench, and she was on some, like, nuck if you buck energy. And I'm like, sister, you 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 got a game to play. Like, you trying to get back on the court. I do we think that need they need to change the rule, though. Like, because, like, initial reaction, your teammate getting a little scuffle or whatever, you gonna step on the court to see what the fuck's going on. Like, right. I do hate that it's just, like, if you put your big toe on the court, you gotta go. Yeah. Like, if they didn't run over there and started, like, getting involved and stuff like that, I think they should let it go with the... You stepped on court, so you got to leave, too. Like, I don't like that rule. First of all, thank you for having me. But, uh, yeah, second of all, everybody been saying everything. But, yeah, nah, it, it's, it's, it's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. Most important part, fuck them. <laughs> hey, at the end of the day, I think somebody said it best. Uh, they insecure because that championship that they do have, didn't come through the hardest uh, road, right? And they see that they still, at this point, right, we're a better team. We got the top transport portal. We got this. We got that. We're making a million dollars in NIL. And we still can't beat these motherfuckers. We cannot beat these. We cannot <laughs> beat these motherfuckers. Like, oh, okay, well, maybe if Angel don't foul out, we should be good. No, Angel did not foul out. And y'all was still, before the scuffle, down about to be nine points. Because Lay was going to make both of them freeze, right? So, And she should have had four more. She should have had two more. Mean go, right? So we still can't beat these motherfuckers. It's a completely different team. And we still and we don't build, have it. And we build to make sure that we could beat them. Yeah, no, we still do not have it. We still do not have the funds. We still do not have the the NIL ain't helping <laughs> us. The, the, flux, the flexes ain't helping us. We, we still, none, nothing is working. We have to beat them at basketball. And they still what? better at us at basketball at the end of the fucking day. So What I don't like is that it seems like in the end, Angel's first thing is always, I got more money than you. And it's just like, I... Nigga, I'm better than you at basketball. Like, and I, I feel like that's what Camilla was laughing about. Like, baby, I'm better than you at hoop. I, like, I just, I don't... It's just... I just want to touch her on the shoulder. You know that meme that got the lady holding the other per the other woman hands like baby. That's what I want. Um, I, and y'all, that's my good sister. Yeah, Yala. like it, it just. It's I very just, much when you know and uh, 
this is another conversation that is not mixed company. Yeah. But it's very much when somebody you get money and you get a little upwardly mobile and you moving yeah. up, moving on up, and then it's oh, I got to look down on the people that I was just shoulder to shoulder with last year. Yeah, I don't like it. But I was but still you on the bus. Oh my God, bro, you just got a car this week. Yeah. And but the thing is the whole premise, like it and I think that's such an interesting take for them to have is because Kim literally all of Kim's teams historically have been built on bringing in players from not so smooth backgrounds. Like they all talk about how they didn't really come from yeah a lot. Humble beginnings, like all these types of things. And even like Angel's viral post, I'm just a girl from Baltimore. I'm too hood for him. I'm too Can you say Baltimore again? Baltimore child. I'm sick of it. Like it's just like they they steep themselves in these deeply bad black, deeply hood aesthetics, but then shun them or run away from them as soon as as soon as it's time to embrace those yeah. things. And for me, that's why I was trying to get to early when I was talking about it's all anti-black. Because you no, know, if you act like Don and her players look, you getting called thugs and street fighters. If you act like Angel and her players look, you get called hood and street fighters. Like you really existing as a black person in this country is hard in general because of the society we live in. But to see people take those things and and use them to shun and belittle other underprivileged people is so nasty to me. Like, and I think that's where my biggest frustration is with LSU is it's not like Angel and her teammates have not experienced some of the same stuff that they're projecting onto South Carolina players. Yeah. Like they went through it just last year and a few months ago. Yeah. I just, but now oh God, because you got an NIL bag, you, so you and like it's it's too it is layered and it's frustrating because we can't even have those conversations on the TL because people somehow think that their team winning a few games or their coach not looking. The only reason why recruits. South Carolina fans defended LSU was because y'all lost to Iowa. But hey, bingo, this is true. Y'all lost to Iowa. Y'all y'all didn't win the big game. Y'all went undefeated and won. Meanwhile, That's why let me y'all pull was Andrew defending Harvey LSU. Uh oh, here comes so CC again. Go ahead. Shit. Let's not even talk about how when Angel came back and she wasn't performing and people were making comments about her sex life and her being in a relationship, it was still Carolina fans that was coming to her defense. So that was beyond. Clock. So that was Clock. Bullshit. So that was Clock. bullshit. And I don't like that. Because like I said, when this game first started, I was like, so glad we get to do this with LSU. There's so many players on their team that I respect. So to see it turn into all of this and to see the way that the fans are trying to villainize Carolina, like, I don't like it, but I wanted to hop back on here because I don't know if y'all address the fact that Lay clocked their tea and said that they're chasing rings, not personal awards. And when they came to yeah. talking about stats and how they're better, it's like, baby, the reason why y'all players look like they're better is because y'all team need them. We have a bench that we can use. Everybody is qualified. So when you play as a team and time is being shared, of course y'all stats are going to look better. Y'all have to play more in order to barely win. That's it. Well, and they had a sweet well, schedule. Well, 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 lady well. clocking the girls. She clocked them. To <laughs> see this point, though, and Loa Yana and everybody that was at the Final Four as my witness, when after South Carolina was losing to Iowa, who, what fans was cheering for Iowa? LSU Damn. fans cheering for, cheering for Iowa. Ain't never seen Iowa play before, and they was in there acting like they ain't had no sense because they was like, oh, South Carolina going to lose? Bet. We on their side. Mm-hmm. And and I and to that point, that's why I think it's so interesting. I'm not gonna say her, but how some of those former players are now getting on Twitter acting like we should be grateful to them for handling business against Iowa. I'm not no enemy of my enemy is my friend type of bitch. So I don't give a flying fuck if y'all be Iowa, Virginia Tech won the title. I don't give a flying fuck if South Carolina didn't win and that's my alma mater. Fuck everybody else that's there. That like this ain't no sister wives type of shit. Y'all didn't stand no business for us. We not friends. Literally, y'all wanted no. to win a championship. Like, I don't like, understand that. Like Alexis, what are you talking like, about, baby? Like you, it's that's crazy. Like it, and if they, if that's what type of time y'all be on in sports, we know, we don't like sports together because no. Now no. I'm an SEC it, girly, so I'm SEC. No, 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 no. The no. only reason why I cheered for LSU last year was because Iowa was being fucking racist. But at the Bingo. end of the day, no, no, 
no, hey. no. If Missouri show up in a um, national oh, no, championship game, no. cutting it off. Uh-uh. Hell no. Arkansas and Missouri don't count. Sorry, girlies. Sorry. <laughs> I ain't cared for none of them last year. We, we like let because let's be the most for real. Like if they was really standing on business, they would have stood up when when shit happened when Aaliyah, when the pictures was supposed to Aaliyah crying. And the same people that said they stood on business for us was the same ones. They just this year made a post saying, "Well, um, the number one draft pick is making less money than Angel," and Aaliyah had to go back and recruit it. Like y'all not about to lie in my face and play in my face like y'all some martyrs for South Carolina. Y'all can go to hell disrespectfully. Hi, my name's Sarah. Um, I graduated at from University of South Carolina in 2020. Blue? And I go to LSU Law though. So <laughs> how's y'all library? Um how the library. Oh, I hate LSU, so I mean I go there because they gave me money. <laughs> so that's okay, why I'm there. <laughs> we ain't mad at it. But I went to all oh, there's two games at LSU when they played South Carolina, and I went to the the recent one that um ESPN game day was at. And I feel like the atmosphere was different versus like watching the game on TV um, on Sunday. Mm-hmm. I felt like with because the crowd was, I thought they thought they were going to win. Mm-hmm. Like that's what it felt like. Is they were like, oh, we're big and bad, like, we're going to win. And so I feel like they were focused on the game because they really thought they were going to win. I think they came into Greenville thinking we have to do something else because I don't think we are going to win. Oh. Because why, like, I felt like there was a little bit of talking um, at LSU, but it wasn't, it wasn't all the elbowing and all that stuff like it was on Sunday. And I feel like y'all, they sat there and was like, what do we need to do? Because last time it didn't work. And I do feel like there's an insecurity there because we (laughs) beat the hell out of you. Well, I beat the hell out of you, but we beat you in your own house with all of these people all in white and we still beat you. And it was loud in there. Like you couldn't even hear they probably couldn't even hear each other on the court, and we still beat them. And now we're in Greenville, which Greenville kind of is our backyard. Yes. So it's giving insecure. And the fans are insecure, too, because they talk all this shit everywhere, on the internet, in Baton Rouge. I hear it every day. And y'all still lose 17 times. I wish I was a betting man, because they was on my Facebook telling me that South Carolina was going to get blew out. Now, I knew these fans had just started watching basketball recently. So I could have collected some bags, but but, but even gamble. I saw the SSN guy and he tweeted that if the oh, fouls brother. if the fouls were called easy, LSU would have won. And in my head, as I as a, objective as I can be, not always, but I have the ability to be watching that game. I the way that he talks about basketball, if he has to know basketball. So him saying that, I'm just kind of like, how? Where did you get that? that? That man showed up to the game in a in a in a SSN shirt in LSU colors on a trip funded by Iowa and LSU fans to be a stand and get pictures off with the parents of the players and be a groupie. That man is no more of a stand than we are at the committee. So I don't, I really don't want to hear it because get it out. You and you not even giving hoops analysis. You saying get it out the net for some random plays and some. You are basically a glory. What's the little white man that do the top plays at the end of the night on ESPN? Tyler. That, that's the, it's the, the same energy. Ain't nothing new. Ain't nothing inventive. You just black with an accent and the white people like it because you rooting for um Caitlin Clark and Angel. Miss me with it. It's bullshit. It's lame because the whole game he up out of his chair because. I'm behind the asses, up out of his chair complaining about fouls, and and then going to go on his Twitter and post the fouls that he thinks should have been called and and literally post it enough fouls for Andrew to get fouled out of the game. So you you literally just destroyed your own point. Yeah. yeah. And these are the same people that if those fouls would have been called, would have used the same excuse that was used in the um, LSU game at LSU. Well, you know, we can't do anything when the best player gets fouled out. I want to see a game where the best player doesn't get fouled out. You saw a game where the best player doesn't get fouled out, and then you said there wasn't enough foul calls. Pick one. And don't give me no BS. Well, LSU attacks the rim more, so they, like, they should have more fouls. Like, let's not be dense. Let's not be dense. Let's not be dense. Rebound under the rim uh, and spoil their chance to score that bit. 
So I, I don't want to hear that shit no, at all. I, I just don't understand why we've been arguing for three days with a team who said that this game don't matter. I just, I don't. I well, don't well, well. Because with Angel, and I get her 1000% when she said that shit, like a woman of my status, she's not lying. We she's not. People she's feel not. away because it's like you got a bag, but this is how I feel. This is my senior year. I know I'm getting all this money. This day problem. They got to come back. I'm not walking over to no fight and risk in my bag so Fenty can see that I'm over here slapping people and I lose my shit. But if see, it did not true. matter, I don't understand why we're still arguing. And that is why I had to really collect myself to realize, why are you going back and forth with these LSU fans? They literally <laughs> said it don't matter. So if it don't matter, why are we arguing about it? Why are we but, getting to a point where we're attacking other players' appearances and what they got going on? I even saw somebody bring up Ja and it's like, I can't remember what the girl page was, but she said something along the lines of like, oh yeah, we forgot about Ja. And it's like, you you know you know what happened? Y'all did forget about Ja. Why? Because we keep our business in house. Unlike when Angel, when we found out that Angel had to put her finger under every single word to read, we found that out because of Brother. Jay's mama told yeah. us. We found, out, we found that out because, your, because her teammate's mom told us. So to oh even bring God. up that Sanat, that Ja is not playing, it's like, girl, what are you talking about? Don protects well, her player. You. There's a reason why y'all don't know because it's not anybody else's business other than the team. They was spending no job. What are you talking about? If they like, saw no, what I saw, they was spending no real well. <laughs> no point has been valid at all. It was they were spinning over real well. Or but let's my... talk about Kateri Poole and how Mookie yeah. acted like the girl was dead. She's no longer with us. It was just acting one like they. telling T last like night they. about the team. Their the pronouns are with they with then. My like, bad, sorry. <laughs> yes. No problem. No problem. Yeah, yeah. That, it's it's it, we we had a time last night, but we are oh, it's getting late, so I'm gonna give everybody one last moment to to, to get a spill. Rex did ask an interesting question, so I'm gonna pose it to y'all. Do you think it's um? Do you think it's weird how fast Morticia posted the clip of Camilla? To me, that absolutely. let me know what their game plan was prior to the game. Pissed Camilla off enough to make her react. That yeah. clip of Camilla was definitely passing around the locker room before the game. I agree, because let me say this, and I always say this, as much as y'all know that Camilla isn't my favorite player, Camilla is a very, very big girl. Angel does her work, and I always say Angel is a dog, but Angel's skill, like we always say, it does need improvement. Angel, Angel works because she's bouncy, she's athletic, she's big. She's not big as Camilla, though, who is also athletic. Camilla is big and she can move. So, to you got to get rid of Camilla. When I saw right. when I saw Anissa come across as high as she did to hit to get to Camilla, I'm like, oh, that's the game plan. I, as much as you want to sit there and say, oh, I'm sitting on that shit all night. Oh, I'm better than Camilla. Camilla makes you feel a type of way, and y'all are trying to get Camilla big ass out of the game. Period. And then committing Bingo. those same type like of um, that your teammate just went out on the stretcher for, and y'all trying to like y'all was playing for her. Oh That's my all. god! Woo! Shit! That's another thing. Oops. Very performative. Hey. They're very talk Go about ahead. it. Wait, what were you gonna say, Reba? I was talking about why did y'all all tweet this? Um, you were saying like Camilla makes her work, and you I could see how frustrating that. Yeah, that's a big-ass girl. Because she's literally trying to go through Camilla's chest and Camilla not budging. She's not. And that works with everybody else. She just pretty much runs through them and, you know, they'll fall or they'll clutch their chest or yeah. uh, they'll complain to the ref about what she's doing. But Camilla just didn't budge. So yeah. it made Angel work. She yeah. doesn't like to work. Camilla's huge now. <laughs> Y'all are hell. But I mean, like that's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, just because well, I don't mean that I mean, in a bad that, way, that, but that, like she's that, used to just getting what she wants because mm -hmm. people absolutely. cave into that because she she's tough. Like she goes through your chest. Yeah, it works for most people, but Camilla didn't it's really huge. much. Camilla is a that's a mantra. And all she do is smile and laugh, bro. Like that would piss me that's, off. I'm not even gonna lie. Like I'm you, I'm over yeah. here. I'm in your shit all day. Like I'm yelling at you. I'm barking at you. I'm like, I ain't going nowhere. I'm doing this shit all day. And she like, I love it, baby. And she's smiling. Like what, girl? <laughs> I might swing on you right now because what the fuck? <laughs> but 
two th- two things we didn't discuss was as much as you know this whole Angel versus Camilla who's better debate. Statistically, Angel got four points on Camilla. Yep. Mm-hmm. Four total points on Camilla, and South Carolina's biggest leads, as Lo loves to point out, were when Camilla wasn't on the floor. Yeah. Hey. I just let Nakia on stage. What's up, girl? And wait, Sonny, Sonny, you been here for a what's while. What's poppin', wait, Sonny? Sonny, what's up? You been here for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, for me, like, the, one of the things that I noticed, right, was when, in the fourth quarter, when they tried to make their run, and then Bree Hall checked in, and she hit those clutch buckets, mm-hmm. she mm-hmm. yelled in Fauget's direction. She was coming back off of the, the baseline. Fauget was there, ready to receive the ball or whatever. Bree yelled. Fauget swung her arm at Bree, like, get out my face. So she was already salty. So when, when Lay t- stole the ball, and she grabbed her jersey. The tensions were already high. That's yeah. what I'm saying. She was such a culprit. She was so responsible for that. Like, I don't give a damn what, like, level of ball you play on. Grabbing somebody by their jersey is an act of aggression. Yep. Unless it's, like, the 30 seconds and they're you're pressing the ball and they got to they gotta step on you, this shit's not acceptable. Yeah. So once you, you do that at the two-minute mark and they're up seven, they know they got you beat. You just yep. waved the white flag. Yep. So Ashlyn... Bree, all of them are hyped as they're walking to their bench where you're standing at. You made no effort to get your ass back to your bench. You won the confrontation. And got it. And and got it. Exactly. You got what you wanted there. And that's my issue. You know what I mean? Like, y'all picked all game long. But with this, like, if you watch South Carolina at all this year, you realize that Camilla only responds when you're fucking with her teammates. Yep. The second Deja put her hands on Ashlyn after after Camilla tried to hold Ashlyn back and Deja went ahead and just pushed her anyway, Camilla was like, bitch, wait, what are you doing? Like, I, I, I diffused it and you just escalated. Now I got a problem with you. And Deja's mm-hmm. one of the smallest people on the floor. But the problem is, Deja's small ass didn't care that Ashlyn was bigger than her. Neither did Flojay. So I don't get, I don't care about that height difference. Ashlyn got about four inches on, uh, on Flojay. Why are you putting your elbow to her face and knowing that she could do you in? You knew what you were doing, and that was my issue. And I saw how they were doing Auburn and how they did uh, Ole Miss. Mm -hmm. And I tweeted before the game, I've seen the antics. Keep the antics antics to a minimum, ladies. Just let the game do the talking. I I felt it. I saw what they were doing. I saw how they were at it. Like, when Flaugier blocked the ball and she said, fuck wrong with that bitch, what are you doing? Now she said, fuck wrong with that bitch. Fuck wrong with that bitch. Mm. This for Poa, nigga. This for Poa, nigga. Yes. So she, you're doing all of that. But when, when, when Bree yells like, "Yeah," like and one and yeah, those are common responses after a made bucket, especially Y'all in got receipts time. out the ass because I didn't even yeah, we we was in there. person, we couldn't see this. So I'm I'm telling you, like if you if you watch the game, like it's probably around like the in the fourth quarter, around the five minute mark, when Bree comes back in, she starts knocking down these buckets. She yells at she yells towards Flaugé because I know they were talking shit. So she yells at Flaugé, and Flaugé looks at Bree, and she says, get out my face, and she swings her arm. So Mama when didn't see that. Angel, and then at the four-minute mark, <laughs> that's when that's when Angel busts Camilla's lip. She didn't bust it the first time. When Angel pointed to her lip, that was her threatening to bust Camilla's lip. Because you watch the clip, it shows Angel has four points. That's the first half. She tried to bust Camilla's lip when, when she pulled her hair, and Camilla pushed her. She turns around, she tries to bust Camilla's lip. That's when she got that intentional foul. That's when she pointed at her lip when they were reviewing the shit. She knew what she was doing. So in the second half, she actually succeeded in bust. I mean, in the fourth quarter, she actually succeeded in busting Angel's, I mean, in Camilla's lip. That's when Camilla sort of, been, she was sort of holding it all in. They didn't, they didn't call a timeout. They kept going. When she intentionally, when, when Flo uh, uh, fouled Lay, that's when they were like, okay, shit's getting out of hand now because you're doing too much. You just busted my lip. And now you're grabbing people's jersey. You try to swing at Bree after she made the basket and yelled. Like, they were they were antagonizing the fuck out of South Carolina. Yeah. And I, I, uh, I but not even a full minute and 58 minutes into the game, Angel started fucking with her. I literally watched the, the, it and was like, stopping, why are you talking shit? Every single time Angel. Why Angel are you talking shit? Right. Together. Exactly. Why are you talking shit? Why are you talking shit to me and the game just started talking about I'm here all game. Like, this is what I do. Camilla's just like, okay, girl. And then when you laugh at a shit talker, when you laugh at a shit talker, that's how you get them mad. Yep. 
Angel was mad because she couldn't get her action out of Camilla. And I, like I said, I went to Tennessee. So I have no dog in the South Carolina LSU fight. I'm just saying this shit as a spectator, some be, somebody that appreciates Don Staley and what the fuck she's built there. I, I'm saying this as somebody who was like, I'm at eighth generation Tennessee and Pat Summit's my everything. So you know what I mean? So for me to give another program credit, because I hate Gino, <laughs> give another program credit, like she's got to be doing something right. You know what I mean? So I know that these her, her, her program isn't on that dirty shit. So when well, I saw I'm just it, glad it you said you're a Tennessee fan because you know the girls love to say we only we only have South Carolina people around here. So yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm from Tennessee. I graduated from Tennessee. Like I was there with Candace uh, right when Candace graduated, and I was there when Glory Johnson was there. So I, I, I yeah, you know Tennessee deep. Like I, I love it. But the point is, it's just like it bothered me because it's like I know what time they were on, and then now you got this narrative being painted about the about Camilla about uh, Bree. From Flo J's mom, and it's like, girl, what are you doing? And, okay, and, and this is my final point, right? If somebody does something wrong and they apologize for it, how the fuck do you come back and say that person didn't do it or they weren't the culprit? If Flo J went to Don and she apologized and said, I'm not that player, what the fuck was she apologizing for? And why you ain't doing it in public? Why Don had to tell us about it? If you so sorry. Because weak. Be because when she got back to her team, they told her not to. You get back to your team. You can't apologize now. You can't make. You can't apologize publicly because that would admit fault. We can no longer spin this in our in our favor. Before the game was even over, that's when those U.S. Today articles dropped off. Camilla embarrassed in South Carolina. That was their PR team at work. Me personally, but I was what proud. they didn't count on, huh? Me personally, I was proud because uh -huh. stop playing with you. Sorry. Exactly. Exactly. And I don't have a problem with nobody sticking up for their teammate because that's what you're taught. You're taught that shit in little league, like. Somebody come and mess with your teammate. You go. You you get to your teammate before anybody else. You know what I mean? Like that's 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 built in ball players from the very beginning. So if you're going to put your hand on somebody's teammate, you you got it in your mind. Somebody's about to be on my ass. If you didn't expect it, that's your fault. That's your weak ass team that don't have that that don't have that camaraderie and that chemistry. Like that's not how a real program works. Like you go straight to your people's back. You don't do that performative shit. Is not perform, and that's the difference between like a, like when the Aces say the like Las Vegas Aces say they really love each other and the Liberty just performing. <laughs> this is what they're talking about. They're, you see the difference between Flatline all of these. Year, they don't love each other. They don't love each other for real, and it's clear because when Poa goes down, your first reactions is to get on Twitter and tweet that you love her, that you want her to get better. Text her to her fucking phone. Why do we need to see that shit? That's performative. That's when you get when you see those couples kissing and they're like, oh, we love each other, we love each other so much, and they don't really like each other. That's the same shit. When they did that, I'm like, yeah, man, that girl's in a hospital with concussion. The first thing y'all do is tweet. No, the first thing they did was try to make her walk off the fucking court. Well, well they did oh, do that. Brother. That was that was just bad. That was bad, ridiculous. Uh, let's talk, thing. let's talk about the training staff taking almost 20 minutes to get there. Trash. Well. So much money in that program, right? Um, all right. Uh, who is next? Young foreign. Go ahead. Okay. Hey, you guys. So, hey. everybody already kind of touched based on everything. I was going to come on here and really talk about Lexus, but Lo and Shay said we're going to keep it cute. So, I'm going to keep it cute as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but I just wanted to touch based on what Dolores said of the whole narrative of like LSU had to stand on South Carolina. I'm not with all that as well. Um, If y'all can go play the game, go play the game. Don't come and try to clock taste like, oh, Iowa embarrassed us. Um, they only beat us by four points. Let's talk about it for real, for real. Um, the whole thing of like, you can talk trash and when somebody says something to you, it's a problem. Like, let's wrap it up. If you can talk trash, we can talk trash as well. Period. Um, me, I'm from Philly. So I used to hoop too. And the girlies down here, we used to be throwing hands. <laughs> we, but we don't we don't do that anymore. But I'm just saying the whole thing of like trying to be the victim. Angel and them can come up there and pull Camilla here or whenever and do all that. Cause Camilla better than me. Cause I would have walked back down and said, "You got one more time, and I'm gonna smack the shit out you right here on the court." And that's just that on that. But you can't keep you can't keep picking at Camilla and picking at her, and then don't expect her to react. Like I just don't understand that. So right. that's you just, had, so you she's know, six seven. You knew she was six seven when you would start with her big Exactly. Head. Exactly. And what this is the thing, right? That I don't really like about Angel is the whole thing of the money thing. It's like, okay, we know you got money, girl. Good. We want you to have money. Congrats, babe. We happy for you. 
But you don't got to come and try to say, like, oh, South Carolina don't have NIL deals. Y'all don't know what they got going on. Stay over there down in Louisiana, and then they going to stay and do what they need to do in Columbia. That's it, and that's all. Y'all can't beat us. Y'all, we played y'all January 25th. Y'all had y'all whole team. Y'all was healthy, still lost. So don't try to say, oh, my ankle is, uh, 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 what's Michaela? Michaela got something with her knee. Y'all still lost. Wrap it up. The conversation is done. That's it, and that's all. That's all I had to say, y'all. Thank you for bringing me up on stage. What part of Philly you from? What part of Philly you from? <laughs> I'm from, like, Southwest, so I'm, like, 10 minutes from the airport. Oh, yeah. Oh. Y'all be getting it in down it's there. Y'all be getting it in. <laughs> <laughs> but I am a Maryland alum, but I'm a South Yay! Carolina alum. Come on, Turp. Come on, Turp you know, alum. We're not even going to get started on all of that, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but shout out to the Turps and shout out to Shay, to every girl. And. It's, it. it's weird to hear somebody from Baltimore call people broke all the time. And it's also weird oh, that when somebody... Oh, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Hold on, Shay. And that's not, that's not Shay. Oh, what I'm saying is... Saying... No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> I grew up in the Habitat house, so I'm not saying that. Say, okay, 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 like, tomorrow. I'm but, say, I'm I grew saying, up in the trenches saying, too, so... <laughs> No, I'm saying if you grew up in Baltimore, if you grew up around these people who did not have money, the odds are if you if your mama had money, your classmates didn't. That's just the that's just the way that the the economy is set up in Baltimore, right? So if your first instinct to call people broke, that's because you're insecure because you grew up broke. That's how that's where? The, that's where you came from. And I got an issue with that. Second of all, you can't call nobody little hair if you got a full wig on. Like that's crazy. Oh man. Like it's that type of shit that is like, okay, you're not thinking clearly. And then another thing, another point I forgot to bring up. When they were saying, like, why would she be in Flaugé's face? I, she Flaugé should have got her out of it. Same way Caitlyn Clark could have could have bowled the shit out of uh, Angel last year when she was walking, following her around the court, waving her hand. Now, you they, know Caitlyn was not going with that lady. <laughs> <laughs> ain't, nobody, ain't, ain't, nobody, ain't, nobody, ain't nobody followed Flaugé around the court. They, if they yelled in her face, it was because it was right after uh, uh, a possession and she's on defense and she's right there. Yeah, but she's nobody, in the way. Nobody following her around the court. So it's like if you if what's good for the goose, I, I keep hearing it all the time and I love it. I heard it this whole night. What's good for the goose is good for the gander because if she can do it last year, why is this year any different? And it don't surprise me that it was Ashley because Ashley and lay tight tight. Like they've been yeah. playing together for years. Who else? Uh, somebody else is on here that has some happens. What's up, Swerve? Swerve. Hey, what's happening? How y'all doing? Oh my God, I've been expecting that. Long time, long time listener, first time speaker. I just want to touch on this. I ain't like how LSU fans was on some shit like going at Pow Pow, bringing up stats and shit. When South Carolina play LSU, the best player on the court is always on South Carolina team. Well, they bringing up stats and shit. Excuse my language, but they bringing up stats coming at her talking about this player, that player. The best player on that court that I seen was Malaysia Full Wiley, a freshman off the bench. Yep. No one had nothing for her. She had Haley Van Field, or whatever her name is, Haley Van Field, I don't know. She had her looking stupid all game. Then they tried to switch her up with another defender, and she had her looking stupid. So why is y'all naming these individuals standing like y'all got the best players? When they, as far as I know, I ain't never seen Monkey beat Don. Unless I'm missing something. Child, she drug us a few years. Like uh, 2014? We, 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 no, like uh, Kiki, ages, right after Asia graduated. Yeah, that was 18? Yeah, it's 19. So, okay. I, I, I was at the game. So all, the that, that was, was, all the girls that's playing now was like this many. They was using their fingers to say their age. Okay, I got you. So, oh my God. so this is my thing. Like, I don't I don't understand that. You know, and the thing about it is, like, I like how Don run her program. You know, she run a tough but clean program. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? And at the same time, is um, I want to touch base. I heard somebody say Haley Van Filth. Had stood on business. I'm sorry, she she really didn't. She did. Cause when, cause, cause when, cause when Camilla turned around, that girl became whiter than she already is. She was so white. She got so she white. She so didn't look clear. But I she tried though. She tried. That girl, had the, that girl tried. had the fear of God on her face. She tried. She Nobody was like, tried. like you, you, I read her mouth up. She said, "Baby, no." Like she was scared of that. <laughs> she <laughs> wanted somebody to hold her back before she got there. But Nobody held her back when she got there. She was like, "Oh shit." And little T T was about over with. She was dead. She was done. Yeah, she she did get scared, but she tried. But I appreciate y'all letting me get my take off. I like listening to y'all. Y'all make good points. Y'all be hitting. No problem. Appreciate, appreciate it, Swerve. Appreciate it, Swerve. All right. Steven, what's up? Hey, everyone. And so, Dolores, you posted something earlier that I really kind of resonated with. And 
I don't know if, what, what folks' thoughts are, um, but I'd be curious to get some takes. Um, just this idea of just like, what can't South Carolina do, right? Like for four years, we had players that just played and didn't do any of the chirping, right? And we still got called all these names. And then this year, we are a team that, you know, was a little bit more spicy. And, you know, I kind of like the spice, but I can respect, you know, Coach Bailey, who's been in the game for a while, is not about that. I get it. It's her program. I trust her. Um, but, you know, we're still getting called some of the same names. Some of the narrative hasn't changed. And so I guess, like, what do we as a program need to do? Like, what do we as fans, like, you know, it's frustrating because I feel like we can't Be do anything. White. Be white. If that's the price of being black, you're going to get that narrative no matter what you do. No matter if you can, you can, you can be prissy, you can wear makeup on the court, or you can wear locks and and sag your sag your joggers. They don't give a fuck. They're going to call you what they're going to call you if they don't like you, or they're they they don't want you to succeed. They're going to say that you're a thug, or they're going to say that you lack uh, charisma, or you're not articulate, or there's going to be something they're going to nag at you about, yep. especially when you're a, a group of black girls or black women being led by a black woman, not being dependent yep. on a bunch of corporate entities to sort of boost your program or you don't have a bunch of these local businesses funneling money through your program to have influence like that's what you're getting at south carolina and i think a lot of people in the country have a problem with that because don was able to build a program and didn't need to be a co-signed by a, a, a white man to do it sonny you spit honey and i think also <laughs> what's frustrating is like lsu and I think it's because maybe Kim is white. They don't realize, like, baby, y'all got the same adversities. That was one of the reasons why I honestly started paying attention to their program after yep. we beat them when both of us were undefeated last year. Because we were the only two teams that were constantly getting flack. And I know it's because most of those girls on that team is black. So that's why this whole beef is just kind of like, what, like, what are we doing? Yeah, that whole misogyny angle that they like to say about looking dusty or looking manly and it's like you can't talk shit when you got somebody on your team with a mustache like protect her Keep oh brother and then, even in that, I don't, let me speak like, on that for a second I don't like that because y'all know my key word is intersectionality you already a woman then you black but you so you already dealing with some intersections and then you're gonna try to rag on black women who are more masculine first of all like just because somebody's more masculine don't mean they ugly you're not finna see her and play and lay or Ashlyn or Ja or Sanaya face. Like they not some smooth, they not some smooth ass girls. Like, are they feminine? But them ain't no ugly girls at all. They could Back. probably get you. They could probably get you if they try hard enough. Uh, my man, my man, my man, my man. Let's keep it cute. So I don't I don't I, I also don't like I don't like that. Like, let's not, let's not, and let's not talk about people's skin. <laughs> Some of that is is hereditary. I do that either. You got some of that on your side as well. Like, don't do that. Like, you can't you can't throw a rock, hide your hand, and then that rock land on your teammate. Because then I'm I'm looking at you funny. I'm and, looking at and, you real funny. And, like, and this this is anti-black. This is gonna sound anti-black, but at the same time, like, don't talk about nobody hair if you are always got on a wig. Because why are you Thank hiding? You. Thank you. You can't wear a wig and call somebody little hair. What does your hair look like? We ain't seen it all year. We just seen that helmet on top of your head. Like, what are you talking about? Nah, and I love a wig as much as anybody else. I love a good wig. But don't, like, don't, just, just don't. Like, you're a black woman. Like, you know how it is. Like, you got on a wig to protect your hair. Like, I'm not a wig girly, so I locked mine up. And I'm trying to grow locks. Like, don't call me little Be hair. Fair. hair. You black, you know how locks work, girl. I got shrinkage. Leave me alone. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, we in here sweating on like natural. My hair definitely gonna look little. Leave me alone. Yeah, I, like, I'm black. I got shrinkage. Like, it was long when I locked it, but it's not a lock. Give me a break, button. Like, like, I'm getting there. Like, give me a break. Those are the worst we shit don't. talkers. When they gotta embarrass you to talk shit, they can't talk shit about the game, or they can't just leave it at the game. They gotta start talking about appearances because you're getting to them. You said something that got to them, and now they got to try to. It's like, all right, you're doing too much. And then Rakia, the whole situation with Tennessee when she called her broke, uh, called the the team broke, or used the word broke in their direction. It's like, what are you doing? What are you like? What is your goal here? Because the thing is, if I recall correctly, when Caitlin Clark waved off Raven last year at the three point line, you said that that was disrespectful for to see that happen to a black girl on that platform. You didn't. You don't want to see a black girl get embarrassed. 
So then you turn around the next year and call somebody little hair. What kind of what kind of hypocrite are you? Like, am I tripping? Because you can't say that Caitlyn disrespected and it was some racist shit. You don't do it to a black girl. That's embarrassing. You don't have no like, show respect. And then come in and you hit somebody in the mouth and then you point to your lip like you were proud of it. Like, what what are you saying to me? And then the whole I told Aaliyah she was a real she was a real foreign baddie around here. Like, you can go at Cardo. I'm off for Brit picking up your team, but I know what you're doing with that angel. That was a dig at Cardoso without digging at Cardoso. Like, just like what? If what I is your goal it, here? Like your platform cannot be um, about women empowerment, and then your first chance you get, you're putting down every woman you see. And she it's also bro- needs to watch that. What are you doing? She, she also needs to watch that because as someone who works in social social media as brands, we definitely do pay attention to that. And them bills can well, be snatched she... for you doing that too. Your words matter. Like we watched Ari lose her her Savage Fenty deal for speaking on domestic violence. So I feel like, what, like, what are we talking about? It's so many different angles where it's just like, Angel Baby, stop letting this woman use you. Just play the sport that you love. Yeah. Get your money and get out the way. That's what I... That's Why what are I we just, doing this? I wish we could talk about that more because to me, that's the root of the issue, but whatever. So we, we've been on for a minute. Mm-hmm. So appreciate everybody for... Um, um, coming on spaces, um, chatting it up with us. Dolores. What, Lakia? Oh, what's up, Lakia? Hi. Hi, friends. I'm going to keep this very brief, very cute. Um, I just want to say my name is Lakia Brown, and I survived LSU. This well. time last year, I was working at LSU. And like I said, I'm going to keep it cute. I'm going to keep it brief. I'm not going to say too much. But what you think maybe happening in the bayou is probably happening down there um it took me no longer than four months to know that the city of baton rouge the state of louisiana and lsu in general was just not for me not at all i'm a two-time south carolina alum so i am hella biased like that's that's all i know um but it There's so much to say, but I'm not going to say it. Um, This game and the fallout and the reactions of, you know, friends, family, whoever, it really just kind of shows you, like, the culture that is very much ingrained there. And as, as someone that I lived overseas my entire life, I came to the University of South Carolina, and that was my home for eight years than to go there, my experience was awful. (laughs) Um, And that's putting it lightly. So I, you know, I feel like I need to pull a Risa Tisa. And (laughs) if I really want to like monetize this pain, like I gotta write a book or some shit, I'm not doing a 50 part TikTok series, that's too much. But like one day, one day the people will know like, how they get down at LSU is how they get down. And the shit is unbelievable. So, You're the- you know, allow your mind to wander because you may or may not be right. But I just, I just had to share. You're the second person that said that. Um, yep. It was a tweet yesterday, a woman who said she worked, I guess, directly under Kim Mulkey, and she asked to be transferred to their terrible football coach. So she has to be held. I, I really wish I could give you, like, an answer. Um, I wasn't even working, like, super closely with the women's basketball team. Like, I actually worked more with the men's basketball team. And that was a pretty good experience. But just, like, LSU athletics as a whole, like, when I say I have, I have smoke for a place, a state, and a school, it's, it's purely from experience. There is no hate. Like, there is no, oh, I'm, I'm jealous of, of their shine or their brand or whatever. Like, no. I literally lived through that shit. And after four months of being there, I just knew it wasn't for me. And I surely got out of there within 10 months. I wasn't even in Louisiana for a year. I got the fuck out of there as fast as I could. And that is all.
Thank you so much for allowing me to come to the stage. <laughs> yes, yeah. our fave, our fave, and keep keep our nieces and nephews. Um, keep them in your prayers. Um, but no, shout out to all of y'all. Thank y'all for chatting it up with us on stage. We have a lot in store for y'all this week. Um, look out for playback. Look out for the wind down. All of that is coming. And we do promise to have some special guests for y'all. So if you have not already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, lock in with us on playback so that you can watch the games with us um, when we do do that. Um, and there's also a lot of merch um, on sale at the moment. Um, that's real cute and real dope. But again, thank y'all. I do want to wrap this up by saying that none, um, I'm speaking for the committee, not anybody else on stage. Um, ultimately, the end goal is for, you know, to uplift uh, each other and uplift the sport. Um, but it does take having uncomfortable conversations um, about race and bias and um, not always putting everybody in the best light. Sometimes you got to shine a light on shit. Um, and I think that's what today's conversation, um, the last part, um, had to do. Um, but we thank y'all for rocking with us. Thank you for everybody that stayed um, on the spaces. Thank you. Um, we got plenty more content out um, coming, and we just hope y'all keep rocking. But thank y'all. Have a blessed night. Um, and, and tap in with us for the selection show. It's going to be a fun show. Yes. We appreciate y'all. Thank you. We appreciate y'all for real. Bye. Good night. Good night.